Greetings, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to a very special, potentially paradoxical episode of Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster, Monster Party. Monster Party. Monster Party. <laughs> I'm falling into the past, or is it the future? The future? Well, I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. Hi, everyone. <laughs> you just hey. don't know. I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroh. And I'm James Conus. And for this episode, well, this is a very special episode because <laughs> it's, it's a follow-up of an earlier episode that we did years back. With a, a mutual friend of ours, yeah. Jake Johansson, and he did this episode where it was all about time travel, and Larry could not make it because Larry had been erased from history, as you all <laughs> well know. Yes. And we did the episode anyway, though, and Sean was working late, so he was a little bit late, and my wife came in and did a great job of you know filling in, and it oh, was a really fun great. episode. Oh, Larry, God. come on, be, be nice. She did a great job. She was fun. You know what? Did it go off the rails a little bit? Sure. Uh-huh. But it was still fun. But it was yeah. still a good time. But since that time, Larry Stroth has been dying to get a hold of this topic and do it the way he sees fit. Yes. And yes. so that is what we are going to do today. This episode, the topic is... What is this topic? Time travel, take two. Time travel, take two. Take two. Take two. Ooh. Another take on time travel, and we're going to see we're gonna how Larry life. can screw gonna, this up. No, no. no we're <laughs> to wait to be introduced. Well, <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. We like to do a long preamble just to frustrate our guests. Okay. Sufficiently frustrated? <laughs> I think I'm there. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> Me too. Well, so- of course we couldn't do this episode without the original guest. So please welcome my friend, celebrated comedian, actor, writer, podcaster, just all around great guy, Jake Johansson. Jake Johansson. <laughs> Yeah. That's exciting. And I tell you, time travel is one of my favorite genres. And uh, I'm just up really for, I'm up for time travel anytime. And I'll tell you something, a weird fun fact about me. Oh, <gasps> OK. In my own personal <laughs> timeline. Yes. I don't remember that other episode you're talking about because that comes after this one in my personal timeline. This is the first episode that uh-huh. I have. OK. Wow. Uh-huh. OK, so, here we go. So. Trippy. So in, kind of like the uh, wormhole aliens in Deep Space Nine, you don't experience time, past, present, future. You experience it all at once? I see looking... No, that's wrong. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I thought I might be wrong. <laughs> yeah. I see looking at uh, the notes from the last episode, which yes. is the next step. To me, it's the right. next episode. But which I, Larry I, I put call, together, by the way. <laughs> I call it the last episode because the listeners are in your timeline. Sure. Um, yes. I see in the last episode, you had brought up Doctor Who. Yes. And this is a slight paradox because this episode is happening before that episode, but I didn't know about Doctor Who. But now, oddly enough, I've seen... All of the modern Doctor Who's. Nice. And so, oh, wow. Un- unlike these guys. <laughs> when you Sean, about, Sean accepted. When you talk about Doctor Who, and in fact, it's been a little while since I've seen them, but Doctor Probably Who. Probably for the best. And his uh, wife. What's her name? Oh, oh, his wife. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And their timelines are different. So they, in the story, are operating. At <clears> yeah. Time. Right. Right. I like the idea of the whole wife thing, but I wasn't so crazy about where it went. You know, I found and, that character to be a little annoying after a while. You know, Are you and, kidding me? <laughs> well, well, and like talking about like where things go and what where it went. I mean, this might be a good place to start. You touch base, Matt, on Doctor Who. Yes, um, but I didn't know about the wife. Could you please tell me again? Starting off, time travel, Doctor Who. Who is Doctor Who? And what does he do with this TARDIS phone booth thing? And, and what's this wife all about? Oh, my God. We're never going to get to this episode. Um, 
<laughs> I know, that's a lot. I mean, in a nutshell, it started in the <clears throat> 60s. It's a show where there's a time traveling time lord who can travel through time and space in his TARDIS, which stands for Time and Relative Dimensions in Space. And it looks like a police phone box because it has a chameleon chip in it that's supposed to, whenever it lands, it's supposed to blend in with its background wherever they're at. <coughs> Right, But the problem is that chameleon chip is either broken or has been purposely uh, enabled or not enabled. Um, disabled. Uh, disabled. Thank you. Right. And but they're uh, so similar, those two words. I know. <laughs> See, I'm so positive in my outlook that I want to, I want everything to be enabled. <laughs> of course. Yes. But, uh, but yeah, so, uh, so now the fun part is wherever the doctor travels through time and space, when he lands, he's in a, Police box. A police Which is funny box. because with the history of Doctor Who and the seasons and seasons and billions of years of travel, you think he just get that fixed? Well, and the yeah, couple, really. in the Colin during the Colin Baker years, he does get it fixed. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, a couple really? episodes, but it's not completely fixed. It can turn right. into other things, but oh, okay, it doesn't but not... blend into its background. So, gotcha. for example, at one point they land and it's just this organ. It's like a pipe organ. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, well, well, the, that, the Neil Gaiman episode where the where the TARDIS is, gets personified is particularly good. That's a great one, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, it's a great series, and I know that there are a lot of people who are put off, like Larry, by the early episodes because they were done on the cheap. You know, the mm -hmm. BBC didn't have cheap, a lot of money. Yeah. Very cheap, but I thought there was a lot of creativity, and yeah. I liked a lot of the monsters. But when you get into the reboot with Chris Eccleston. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would suggest to anyone who loves time travel, who just loves fun, good science fiction adventure that has a little humor to it, that's a great ride. Yes. Well, the, uh, the Chris Eccleston season took it out of the low-budget cult status, and now it's a giant franchise like Star Trek or Star Wars or anything yes. else. I mean, it's, right. it's, not, it's a giant thing now. Well, yeah, Christopher Eccleston launched that spaceship but he only did one season I one think. season right. yeah and then he quit one season yeah right. Right. there was right. some uh I, there was a lot of problems apparently there was some personality differences yeah and, and i don't he think he thought he didn't see that it was going to become this giant hit but then, maybe not yeah right after him you get into david the yeah. the david Tennant, matt smith years of of that reboot which chris frackleson did the first year it's terrific and I when, he was really good yeah and when doctor who he Transform. He doesn't die, but he he transforms into, into another a, person. He regenerates into another he re person. Regenerates, right. and he's been which, doing this since the first show because the first original shows with William Hartnell as the first Doctor, he was getting old and a little crotchety and forgetting his lines. And they felt, well, we can either cancel this thing, but it's a hit. But how can we carry this on, but just put a new actor in there that's not playing the same guy? Oh, we want to make him different, and it's brilliant. And Genius. it's the best. It's the best writer's device workaround yes. to re yes. to recasting. And I it's not the, even recasting. That's what's so great. It's not yeah. even recasting. I mean, it is recasting, but it's recasting a different character who's the same person. Right. It's a different that face. Concept yeah. is so beautiful. Yeah. And yeah, what's really kind of interesting, even though I haven't really watched an episode, I am aware that, and now there's this been this transition, and now for the first time, you have a woman for 2020 playing Doctor Who, correct? Well, yes. Yes. Oh, well, no, <laughs> come on. I, no, you're right. You're right. I don't want to dismiss uh, your prowess with your Doctor Who, Larry, because you're absolutely right. <laughs> he's right. No, he's right. But yes. But to me, the golden <laughs> the golden times were the David Tennant and Matt Smith. And then once it once it went to um, Capaldi, Capaldi, it started to lose it. And yeah, Joe, yeah. I feel like, and this is not Jody Whittaker's fault. No, and it's not it's not women's fault. It's just I think no. I think the writing or the, the writing is not their, there, the, or the philosophy from the network or whatever. But what I was alluding to is the character River Song, River Song, by, yes, played by Alex Kingston, correct, and. She overarchs several episodes of of that David Tennant, uh, Matt Smith, those years, and she and the Doctor are living in timelines that are different. And so she's got a notebook to remind her of uh, what's was it five hundred year diary. Yeah, no, it's what happened. What's happened to her versus what's happened to him, and so right. she can remember things that he can't. Yeah, right, right. 
I mean, clever, clever concept, but I have to admit, never been a fan of River Song. Yeah, she, I like she's her, annoying. No, yeah, oh, I, I just, doesn't do anything. They made her like, like I liked her in the beginning. Spoiler alert! If there could be a spoiler <laughs> alert in time travel, <laughs> yes, 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 yeah, yes, there uh, can. When they when they go to assassinate Hitler or the the Nazi one, I, yeah. I mean, see, I loved all that stuff. I I I disagree. I respect. I respectfully disagree that uh, the River Song episodes were pretty great. Yeah, I mean, I think I don't. I'm just saying all the episodes with her were bad. I just didn't. Her character after a while just just it graded on me. Just graded on me. Yeah, but but mm. there's always clever writing and and I I, I actually think well, Capaldi like to me that Matt Smith I thought started out strong and got I was not a fan bad and Capaldi oh. I thought started out weak and then they got finally got better with the running better, with his yeah. episodes. You know. Yeah, oh. I thought Matt Smith was a was a great doctor. I and I think all the doctors have been successful. Yeah, me too. I don't. I really don't think that there's a bad one in the bunch. Yeah, and Matt Smith, no. I thought was great, and when it was cooking, he was excellent. The Go Amy ahead. Pond years; those were my those were my favorite. She's great. Yeah, I I, I liked her, and I love that actress. Wait, was right. she yeah. a doctor? She wasn't a doctor. She was not a doctor. No, she She's was a companion. companion. She was, she was, yeah. a, she was a companion she was with her tenant, with her boyfriend with Rory. Her boyfriend Rory and right. Karen Karen Gillan. Karen Gillan, yes, who's uh, also. Who's also in the uh, uh, Jumanji movies? Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy, Galaxy and right. yes, yeah, Avengers. She's, wonder- right. she's wonderful. My problem with that was during those years with Matt Smith, there was kind of too much quipping. It, everything was yes. there was all these musical stings that were trying to tell you how to feel. Overwritten, and, and I, too I, glib. I, I just felt it was just like he was a little kooky. Yeah, and I yeah, what I loved yeah. about David she, she, Tennant. She, she, is David Tennant could be silly and weird, but then when the shit went down, you really felt a sense of gravitas. Like, Which is how Tom Baker was. You know, Tom correct. Baker was that yes. same way. He could yep. be very silly, but then like when he's like turns and like, okay, this is serious, and you're like, whoa, yeah. And that's what and that's what Tennant kind of was like a little bit like that, which I liked. Yeah, I, I only brought it up because it features characters that are in the same episode from different timelines, which was the. Yeah, I do I was like trying that. to advance at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And also, really, if you want to watch a show that is all time, tra- the doctor travels in space and time. Every single episode. Every yeah, single yeah. episode. That's the yeah. premise of the it's show. It's also the yeah. longest running time travel series ever. There was a brief, t- that's true. There is a brief period when the Time Lords punish him, and it's right at the beginning of his third regeneration into um, John Pertwee. And he is forced to stay on Earth. Oh, yeah. So he can't travel in the TARDIS. And so he's forced to deal with all the aliens on Earth that attack. So he uh, a lot of him battling the Master. Yeah, That sounds like a network budgetary thing also. It's like, maybe, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. We, we, we can't recreate other plans. Yeah. As Sean says, surprisingly, it was pretty good. And, and there, is like one, a, yeah. there is a really great one called Inferno a story called Inferno where the doctor's trying to break the time Lord's hold on him. And he uses this device to try to crack through their barrier. And what ends up happening is that he gets thrust into a parallel universe. Ooh. And it's the same story that's happening, which is an interesting story already, but then you get, it's a little cliche because it's the evil universe. And so sure. everyone's an asshole and it's an authoritarian government and everything. But it's, it's, it's actually a lot of fun. And, and if I was to suggest one John Pertwee story, that would be the first one. Mm. He's good. He's like, he's like a man of action. He's like almost like a... Yeah, he's got a James agent. Bond quality to him. He's got a car. Yeah, and he, he does has it. has a hovercraft. And, yeah. And he does it all in a really frilly, puffy shirt and pulls yeah. it off. <laughs> looks good in it. Yeah, it really yeah. looks good in it. <laughs> well, so I, I get the idea that it's it's really interesting and it's been around for a while, but he is I have like, a feeling this is a wind-up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we've no, talked no. about it for a while now. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's like as the world of time travel, at the world of time travel, this is very interesting. He definitely falls into this category. And it's interesting. It has been around. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, that there is more uh, Doctor Who content than there is Star Trek content, correct? Maybe if you include all the Star Trek spinoffs, there might not be. Maybe, but I don't yeah, know. that's true. Yeah, I mean, I was just as I as you were saying that, I was thinking like, well, yeah, they did do four shows, and uh, and, the and, and then this, still, oh, well, the shows that I count, I'm not counting <laughs> the other ones, the new ones. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, let's but, just say there's but, a 
there's a shit ton of Star Trek. There's a lot of yeah, Star Trek, yeah. but but that is a show that has been running for a very long time. And and if you don't include the hiatus, it's been running so long, it must be tired. <laughs> well, <laughs> funny you should say that. <laughs> I just wish the the writing. I wish somebody would come in who really gets it and loves it, and keep Jodie Whittaker. I think she's great. I mean, occasionally, I think there's been good episodes with Jodie Whittaker. I mean, it's just been here and there. Consistent. Here and there. Yeah, I mean, there's some been really good though. Yeah, but um, but yeah, that's I mean, look, that's a logical a logical one to start with because that's when I'm so ones. happy. We're planning on someday doing a Doctor Who episode, but I would really like to lend, and this might be a good time to do it too, Larry, is give you, at least from Eccleston through Tenet, and see yeah. how you feel about that. Oh my God. I, if, if so I many could, good stories. If I could take a pill and forget those and watch them again, I would <laughs> I know, love it. I know, yeah. <laughs> but, wow. hey, but hey, I, Jake, Blink, right? Blink with the angels? Oh yeah, oh my God, yes. What yes. are the greatest- There's so many great- Episodes of anything ever written, I think. And so that's, I had, that's perfect example of why the Matt Smith seasons to me went off the rail because they they showed the goddamn angels moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't do that. It ruins the the whole point is not to show the move. Once Damn they show that, I'm done. Sean, I love you. Angry at Matt Smith. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was so I watched them on my own the first up until halfway into Matt Smith. And then my daughter, I got, she got mono and we dove in from the beginning oh, wow. and went again. And then my wife got into it as we were getting current. And so we went back and watched a bunch after that. So I've, I've seen a lot of them a couple of times, not as many as times as I've seen some of the Gilligan's islands, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where's the time you know travel episode of Gilligan's Island? Yeah. Well, we'll <laughs> wait a minute. We'll get to that in a second. But before we move on, from Doctor Who, I would like to say something about the Chris Eccleston season. And even though he quit, which I think he quit, like, I, he, once it aired, like, it, it dropped, and then he's really? like, I'm out, you know? Wow, wow. But one of the things that I think really works, and why it works as just having one season with Chris Eccleston, you get the feeling that this particular incarnation of the Doctor has been through the ringer. Mm-hmm. And... There is a darkness to him. He's mm-hmm. not quite as fun as David Tennant. Right. No, he he came in with a sort of I've had it with this. Yes. And that may have been because he he took the job for whatever reason he did. And then at the end of it he thought, look, I got better th- I'm an actor. I got I'm better an actor, things to right. do yeah. than this. Oh, yeah. that, and, that, so, yeah. and, and so yes, that right, subtext yeah. of his performance actually yeah. worked. The sure. doctor. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I love I love the fact that <laughs> oh, oh, the show is a success. I'm typecast. Oh my God, what am I going to do now? Well, look at David Tennant. What show isn't he in now? Oh my yeah, God. I know, yeah. I know, really. David Tennant is the star version of Brian Dennehy, rest in peace. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that. Uh, so, wait a not minute. That, you, not that Cocoon was a time travel movie, but it was old people <laughs> who stayed of. young for a long time. True. Right. In, yeah. in, in a yeah. broad definition, <laughs> which is a version of time travel in the sense we're all traveling through time. It's just, you know. Right. We're right, dying right. every minute. Thanks right. for reminding us. <laughs> now, and it, it's so true. It's so yeah. true. Hey, I just would you guys point out a minute. Would you guys mind if I jumped in with something because you guys mentioned Gilligan's Island? Please, sure. And so the guy that created Gilligan's Island, Sherwood Schwartz, had another show called It's About Time, and we discussed it's it briefly. Time. Right. Last briefly. Time. Very I've briefly. Never seen, I never saw that show. I watched 3 of them today. Yeah, yeah. How do you uh, like that? What's it on? Who, who's in it? What's this YouTube? It's it's uh, Joey Ross. Oh, okay, yeah. Ooh, I ooh. think I remember oh. that. Yeah, and um, Imogene Coca. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are they cavemen or something? Yeah, they are cavemen. Two it's astronauts. People, it's like yeah. it's not Land of the Lost, but it's like somebody <laughs> they people go back in time from now. A- astronauts go through a time barrier when they're in space, and they land in the prehistoric past. And this prehistoric past is like all the other wrong ones. There are dinosaurs. Right. <laughs> right. And everybody's a funny caveman. And there's the astronauts. They're always hiding their spaceship. They tell everybody, oh, we're from the other side of the hill. It's almost like a prime directive thing. They Wait, right. so right. they speak English in the past? Yes, they do. But they speak <laughs> in a right. clipped, That's a, handy. in a clipped, like almost like what they would do in old westerns when they'd have the Indians talk. 
Right, mm. right. Uh, yeah, we've got a few more prepositions. and Right, right. Yeah, it's right. a lot of that. Initially, it was very popular, but then the ratings started to just plummet because it was the same thing over and over again. And people right. started to get tired of hearing me, you, uh, me, you know, it was like this stilted caveman speech. Yeah. And so this is what they did. Midstream, they escape from the past and now they bring the Stone Age family into the future. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So now it's the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, they, don't know. Yeah. they put on a record like, oh, what? how'd they get that man in the box? And, you know, like right, all right. that kind of stuff. Fish out of water. Yeah, fish out of water. It sounds, like, it sounds like one of the network executives got involved. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. What if, uh, I got an idea. Yeah. yeah, and I think they did maybe, I think it was like four episodes and then it was done. <laughs> and it was over. <laughs> well, if you think about it, it it's got to be more cost effective to bring the caveman to the future. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. We'll, just use, we'll just use the setup from, you know, leave it right. to Beaver here, you know, I, kind, of, kind of a thing. I think they were using the set of Gilligan's Island. You know, they just added some oh, weird vines cave. and like yeah. a cave here sure. and there. I watched three of them. And it's almost like a Where's Waldo game of find the joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let me let me guess. Was it like stock footage of dinosaurs from other shows and movies? Uh, yes. You didn't really even see the dinosaurs too often. Oh, uh, okay. It was mostly well, it, just hilarious hijinks mm-hmm. with right. all the uh, the Stone Age people. It had a cool theme song. Yeah. Do you it's remember about how it time. Went it's about time. It's about boom, 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 boom. Yeah. It's like, it's great. Like, oh, it's about time. It's about space. Yeah. <laughs> it's about, it's about right, time. Right. It's about space. It's about yes, space. that's right. That's yeah, the one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the guy who was the boss, who's the tribal chief, that was Cliff Norton. And you've seen him in stuff around that time. It's character actor. And then right. his right hand man, Quan, played by Mike Mazurki. And Mike Ooh. Mazurki. He's always the giant bruiser, scary looking guy in like Bonanza and mm-hmm. okay. <clears throat> whatever show was happening around that time. It takes place in like, I mean, you, they shot these in like, what, 1966, 67. And so there were a lot of like, let's say B uh, movie directors who went on to direct for Sherwood Schwartz and this, and this project, like, like Jack Arnold, who gave us Creature for the Black Moon. He directed right. a few episodes. Right. Yeah. And also some young directors <clears throat> such as Richard Donner. Well, this is way oh, before oh, Superman. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Hey, you got to start somewhere, even, right? Even they couldn't save it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the third incarnation was that now they're in like the road warrior future, you know, or something. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's so so that, yeah, that's a weird anomaly of a so those time are, travel those show. Are two, those are two neat TV shows. Now, you guys start out with what, what James likes to call the, uh, on the, on the last show, James calls it the Citizen Kane of time travel movies, and that's The Time Machine from 1960. Sure. Oh, and, and, you know, the funny thing is I love this film so much. To me, me it's, too. The, it's the quintessential yeah, it's time travel film. And this was a film that was based on uh, the H.G. Wells story from 1895, the film was directed by George Powell, who you know was the producer of Destination Moon and War of the Worlds and When Worlds Collide. And the movie is so colorful. It's beautiful. And <clears throat> it, it starts out at right at the, it just, it's just about to turn into the uh, 1900, you know, hey, it's the new century kind of a thing. Right. And, and you have uh, this uh, character played by Rod Taylor, who has his friends waiting for him for this party, supposedly. And Taylor comes in, he's all, oh, beat up and something. What's, what's wrong? Well, what happened? And he tells this story about <clears throat> this miraculous machine he created. And it's interesting, one of the reasons why he creates this machine is he's tired and fed up with man's inhumanity to man, the, 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 the ability to create war and destruction. He's gotta, he feels there's got to be something better moving into the future. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> well, and as, as Matt pointed out, you know, he goes far to the distant future and it encounters quite a twisted society where either mankind has turned into, into these carnivorous, fat, blobbly, blue, long-haired, beady-eyed <laughs> Morlocks that live inside this giant cave. There's our cosplay. But, but there's two of them, right? There's, it's not just the Morlocks. It's well, the here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. Matt brought up what I thought was really neat was there's these creatures that live underneath the surface, the Morlocks, and then there are these beautiful blonde people called the Eloi 
that live on, on the surface and, and everything's provided for them. But I think what was funny was Matt made an interesting comment. He goes, yeah, they're fattening up the Eloy so they can eat them. And I thought to myself, I don't remember seeing one fat Eloy there, you know, in the movie. <laughs> right. Matt, I mean, don't Matt, don't, Stringy. don't you expect, well, don't <laughs> you, what you expect in this world that the Eloy wouldn't be walking around by eating fruit. They'd be sitting you know, at a computer monitor or something and just eating like <laughs> chocolate and stuff. Yeah, the, you Larry, would think Larry, the Morlocks yeah. the Morlocks are on the keto diet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, that's why they look so great. Uh, Larry, that's brilliant. And and that's true. And who knows what their taste is like when it comes to the food. But I I think you'd want a fattened up piece of meat. Yes. And so sure. instead of giving well, them well fruit, marbled. You want well, well marbled. Mar- marbled. Yeah, you don't want it too fatty. You want yeah. it marbled. But to help them how about instead of all this fruit and fiber and everything, create Cheetos, you know, <gasps> like a, a factory underground that just makes screaming yellow zonkers. Oh my God. You know? <laughs> oh yes. Yes. This is and the it, problem. It you guys are relating for the, what, what? You, you guys are fantasizing about your ideal Eloy life. I, <laughs> I want to be the Morlock. I'm going to go. I'm going. <laughs> Do you really do you really want to be that Morlock sitting inside the cave and there's no sunlight it's or kind of what I do now? That's our lives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Matt, that's t- just just totally uh, off topic here. You know, I yeah. just got my physical and the doctor oh, yeah. said, Hey, Larry, your heart is fine, your blood is fine, your cholesterol's fine, but you know, Larry, I have to start giving you vitamin D. And I go, Why do I need vitamin D? He goes, well, do you, do you get enough sun in your life? I'm all, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> sure, so, yeah. So I would imagine those Morlocks would be taking a lot of vitamin D. Yeah. Know, mm-hmm. yeah that's what's, those big machines that are pumping underground, all making vitamin D. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, see, I haven't seen that 1960 one. I've only seen the Guy Pierce one. Oh, oh, oh really? Oh, whoa, no, whoa. No. Are, Larry you, is, are you are Larry, you did you hear that? Also I'm, good. I'm also good. No, also no, good. no, no, Jay. No, 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 no Jay. Guy Pierce is crack? very handsome. And no, terrible yes. CGI <laughs> Morlocks. Yeah, it's a, it's he is a great actor, but that's yeah. a terrible movie. We need to get together and oh. watch the original. Mm-hmm. We yes. do if we're ever allowed. I mean, yeah. look, I'm, I'm up for it. I'm not afraid of the. I call it the Varinus. I'm not afraid of the Varinus. You know, right now. And, and, you know, Jake. If there's anyone like you out there right now, if you're one of these people that goes, "Oh, I don't want to see a movie in 1960," trust what Matt just said. Oh it's, no, it's that's so not true. who I am. The, no, he's not okay. that. He's not. Okay, okay. Because I want to say, uh, look, I appreciate the guys trying to maybe put a new twist on it a little way, but and Guy Pierce is a wonderful actor. But that film is just dreadful. I, the time machine looks cool. I, yeah. I do like the time machine. No, no, it's too busy. Has, it has Matt. It still has the spinning thing. Yeah. And, and I like that. But it's like the Morlocks. It doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't follow any logic. The, as Sean said, the CGI is dreadful. If you want a great classic one, go to the 1960 version. I, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Just the design of the time machine. It's yeah. just a work of art. It's, it's like a Victorian kind okay. of, it's like, yeah. yeah. It's really and cool. um, how many people here in the Who Zoom world, us? in the Zoom world, have been to Bob Burns? Yes. I've sat in the time machine. I have sat wow. in that original time machine. Yeah. yeah. And, the thing, and they had to restore it because it was, you know, people in like horrible you were sitting shape. in it. <laughs> <laughs> where, where do you go? I sit down. Every, I'm sad. Every, <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm has, so sorry. It has nothing to do with your size or your weight. It's like everyone wants to sit in the time machine. Oh, Bob, can you sit in the time machine? Everyone goes, he goes oh, all right. Well, <laughs> everyone be, sit in the time to machine. To be fair, it was fucked up before he got it. Mm-hmm. And then it was like Greg Nicotero and a number of people helped him bring this thing back to life. And it's right, beautiful. Right. I mean, it's so yeah, it's amazing. beautiful. And that movie, I mean, just the designs. All across the board. I mean, I, one thing I would have to say is that the Eloy, their wigs, is probably the weakest part of the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those were wigs? <laughs> yes, Larry. <laughs> See, I actually thought they had a casting call for just a lot of blonde hair. A lot of, like, yeah. Look, look, look. Bowl cut blonde. Okay, okay now look, <laughs> I, I will say this. Some people, you know, Jake, I don't know if you're one of these people, but it's like, oh, I don't like, uh, you know, uh, like special effects from the past. Look, 
the special effects are very charming. Yeah, and they're some good. Of them are just beautiful. Yeah, for and, the time, they're and, great. Yeah, yeah. And, and the Morlocks look terrific. They, they are scary, yeah. And they're really they are, scary. I, Matt, when I saw this as a kid, it frightened the hell out of me. And, and there's this battle, and one of them catches on fire. And I was like, oh, my God, they just lit that guy on fire. If you're willing to buy into time travel, but then you're calling bullshit on wigs... <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like that's a problem, Jake. Jake, no, 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 Jake, Jake, no. You, if you want to open this can of worms, uh, <laughs> you would think that after all the years of man striving, the one thing we'd get right is wigs. <laughs> and yet, it turns out to that's the bugaboo of digital effects is hair. They can't yes. create the right oh, ape Christ. man, wolf man. They well, they're getting the closer. Hair, they're right? getting better. If they if they spend enough money, man, the apes getting, is pretty. Well, yeah, and like the, the the like regular animals, like in the new Jungle Book movie and stuff. It looks it looks pretty realistic. That was now. the best part about the Jungle Book movie. Yeah, was, yeah, but that. like, but yeah, that'll be the great thing about traveling into the future is how terrific <laughs> the hairy monsters are going to be hey, in the movies. Hey, right. Guys, can I just just a slight deviation here, which is that speaking about wigs. Have you noticed how crappy wigs are now? Like, it seems like they've gotten worse, right? When I watch a lot of shows, in movies and TV shows, when someone's wearing a wig, they're usually really terrible. You know, we were raised during the days of the original Star Trek, where William Shatner, I think, had maybe the single best hairpiece ever (laughs) made. I didn't know. I didn't know it was a hairpiece. You didn't know either. See, I, no, oh, I didn't know. Years. I yeah. didn't know that for years. Yeah. I, and I and I still question it. What, what do you mean you still question this? Is, <laughs> you question so many things. <laughs> but, but he, I, I, he I, wasn't I wearing a wig, and look, Deckard is not a replicant. Look, and the moon landing was fake. Now I never said that. And <laughs> as far as the Decker thing, that's for another show. Okay, but <laughs> it turns out. Go ahead, Jake. It, it seems like it turns out that as we travel forward in time conventionally by just aging, that uh, the solution to wig problems is just shave your head. I mean, that seems like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. even white guys now are shaving their head. It's just like, look, there's no good wigs. Just shave right. your head. Oh, you yeah. know, and that's a really good point because when you see shows where someone has evolved – they always have the big bald head. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the alien. The alien. The aliens. It's, yeah, they don't classic. need it. So yeah. There you go. Like, and that's not, that alien, that gray alien can grow hair, but he <laughs> shaves it. Yeah. And like uh, like the classic Outer Limits episode, The Sixth Finger, David McCollum, as he gets smarter, he loses his hair gradually sure. and gradually until he has no yeah. hair and he's a big bulbous head. That's an yeah. interesting take on a time travel story, don't you think? Kind the of like finger? evolutionary. Because evolutionary it's not... Time Absolutely. isn't traveling around him. He is the time traveler. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, are we, what are we going to do with that sixth finger? I mean, to ask the unanswered. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can answer. Oh, the things you can do. Well, In the we'll future, be, bowling be, balls are very different. <laughs> <laughs> because you only need three holes for the bowling ball. I now. think that six fi- No, I think that six finger will be used for other things. Like if you're going <laughs> to, yeah. you'll be able to type much faster, play the piano. Or they, be used you put a feather use, on the end of it. Ooh. Or, or be, be used to weave better wigs. Yeah. So I see, that, see, the wigs will be better because of <laughs> the sixth finger. Exactly. Thank you. If we all go into the future together, I'm going to let you guys lick the sixth finger first. <laughs> That's great, Jake. Thank you. I won't. And, yeah, no, I just and, I like just like to try and get the okay. level where I like it. I um, can't resist. I, well, I would have do you, to. Do you so, mind if I bring up? Uh, well, I was just going to say, and, okay. and so that that's a bit about the time machine. And of course, Alan Young, who went on to go into the Mr. Ed TV show and the beautiful Yvette Another great Mimu. time travel show. Yes, Mimu. Oh, of course. <laughs> we don't did have the, talking horses she yet. She did the black hole, but I'm ready to move on. Let's move on from the time machine. I'm trying to look here at the biggest budget movie that's come out since <gasps> the other episode. Oh, oh, oh. I think and, I know it, but go ahead. Uh, well, Go ahead, my friend, I've got I've got two here, and one of them stars Tom Cruise, which I really liked. Yes, that's a great movie, sure. actually. I right? like that movie. Yeah, Edge of Tomorrow. Yes, yes. Right, it's on my list. Right. Let's talk about Edge of that's Tomorrow. That's a really cool movie. Now, Sean, what's the date on that one? It's, it's Edge of Tomorrow was uh, 2014. 2014. With, uh, Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt, yeah, Bill Paxton. Emily Blunt was good in that. That was yeah. a film. Interesting concept, Jake. Do you want to tell us what that was about? 
Well, it's a loop. You know, yeah. <clears throat> Tom Cruise is caught in this time loop. It's it's sort of a future, but analogous to a World War II type of a situation. Yeah, it was like right? an alien race. And yeah, like, they're yeah. fighting the aliens. You know, it's a war that we're losing, and these aliens are... Yeah, just decimating the world. And each time as he goes, he tries to get further and further in this loop to try and get as much information because what happened when he basically gets killed, well, the yeah. loop starts over again. It's, well, a, freak, it's, similar it's a freak to a, thing, though. Yeah, it's a it's freak similar thing. to a Groundhog Day premise, yeah, totally. except right. that instead, yes, of, that's instead of recycling on a 24-hour clock, as long as he can stay alive, and then he resets to the same point at right. the beginning. Because it's a weird thing with like the make the, the biological makeup of these aliens. He's fighting an alien, and like the innards of the blood or something from this alien spills on him, and that somehow causes. Because I think the aliens like they shift in time or something, or I think too, or they. And so when he gets you know covered in this gunk from the alien, he's affected by it, and he starts having his own loop in his own timeline. So for listeners who haven't checked it out, the interesting thing about it is it's not just a survival story. It's actually he and this Emily Blunt character, there's a, a goal. They're, they're trying to get to a certain point where they can overtake these aliens, basically. Because right. she's, also, she's also looping. And, and, and it takes him a while to find someone else who knows what he's... There's a book by Ken Grimwood called Replay. I don't know if you've read this book, mm -mm. but it's a, it's a similar kind of a, a loop Concept. story Concept. where... The character is trying to find someone else who's having the same experience that he's having, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a great that's a great book. The Amazing Jonathan, mm -hmm. who really is amazing, turned me on to that book years ago. And cool. I think it's really interesting if, if think about it for listeners. Once he goes through this point, he gets killed. It starts over again. So it's not that the people he encountered in the last loop. They know him. They don't. He has to start over again. Right. So he has yeah. to remember. It's like Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So he has to very quickly let these people know who he is, what this mission is. And it's, it's, that's what I loved. That was the fascinating part. Even though they would go through, it's like uh, through to get to the next point and the next point. But just to try to introduce himself each time is fantastic. He becomes, yeah, he be, and he, he becomes more facile and able to do that as he <clears> recycles. <throat> and that's like... I'm not bringing this up because we have to talk about it, but it, it's so similar to Groundhog Day, which I just watched with my family. And there's a, there's one of the days in Groundhog Day where Bill Murray convinces Andy McDowell that he really is a god, that this is happening to him. He he figures out how to do that, and he abandons having to do that over and over. But that's exactly what you're talking about in Edge of Tomorrow. Tom Cruise has to convince people quickly that this is what's happening and then try and advance right to try and compress the early part of that story so that he can get to what he wants to accomplish before he gets <clears throat> killed again. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's really a it's really a terrific movie, I thought. There's a great Loved sequence, it. there's a great sequence in the film where after going through this loop many, many, many times, he gets to this point where he sees these soldiers that are he wants them to help him and and they want to beat him up and then immediately he explains each person who they are their background that's right how yeah. they're their families and the guys <clears throat> freak out it's it's a great moment and the way again we're, groundhog day <laughs> dude you got to watch groundhog day again i just watched it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah this is this is this is ripped from the movie Groundhog Day. Yeah, it's like a sci-fi version wait, of Groundhog wait. Day. Are you saying that Edge of Tomorrow is a rip-off of Groundhog Day? No, but I'm saying yeah, that the writers maybe? of Edge of Tomorrow, I guarantee yeah. that the writers of Edge of Tomorrow watched Groundhog Day and they watched that scene where Bill Murray goes through the diner and talks yeah. to all the people sure. in the diner and tells them all their personal stories back so that Andy McDowell can go, what the fuck? Okay. <clears throat> I don't remember you know, seeing you know, like a groundhog in Edge of Tomorrow, though. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. I, that's, that doesn't now you're just being difficult. Yeah, that, yeah, does, yeah. that doesn't deserve a response. Yeah. I <laughs> We're all friends yeah. here. Yeah, why? Why? Why you got to throw that one in? You know, I, I, I've always I said many times how CGI, you know, can be great. Sometimes it can be really bad. But I think the aliens in uh, Edge of Tomorrow are really cool and pretty frightening. Like, they're... Hard to describe. They're like they move so fast and so furiously, and like they're just very effective in the mm. movie. And it's Tom Cruise at the height of his doing yeah, his good. action hero thing. I love him. Yeah, yeah, it works really good. And he's a he's a fully grown up man in that. I mean, this yeah. is not that long ago, less than ten no. years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, agreed. 
Love so, it. Nice one, Jake. Nice one. Sean, did you want to, did you want to give us one? Sure. Well, it's interesting that you just brought up uh, that movie, Jake, and bring up Groundhog Day because this is a movie and it's actually a sequel too. That is basically a horror version of Groundhog Day. Um, mm-hmm. It's a movie that was made just a couple of years ago and there was a sequel too called Happy Death Day. <gasps> and Death this Day. was a movie oh, that, no. this is a movie that's that 2000, 2017. It yeah, it, it came out you know, and it did pretty well and there's a sequel. But uh, Happy Death Day is basically like a slasher film meets Groundhog Day. And it's a movie that's kind of not really targeted to our generation. And, and I remember seeing commercials from them thinking, eh, this is going to be lame. And it's actually pretty enjoyable. And basically there's this college student, this kind of self-absorbed, selfish college student, this girl who uh, wakes up in this guy's dormitory room after a night of hard partying and she doesn't remember what happened. She doesn't remember being with this guy and she goes about her business and then she starts getting stalked by this guy in this creepy mask. Is it basically like this kind of big baby face, which is like the, the mascot for the college football team or something. Okay. And sure. so this guy's stalking her and he eventually gets her and kills her. And as soon as he stabs her, she wakes up again in the, in the dorm room. Same thing. It keeps happening oh. over and over. So she's reliving her death over and over again. She's like, what the hell's going on? Oh, and my, just, oh my God. And she has to figure it out. And she finds out there's this, like, there's this serial killer that was just loose. Maybe it's him. And all this kind of stuff starts happening. It's happening on her birthday. And so it's basically her trying to figure out, trying to find the killer, trying to find out who that she knows could be the killer. And it's the same kind of thing, like Groundhog Day or or Edge of Tomorrow, she has to retrace her steps. She knows exactly what's going to happen. She, it's, it's pretty interesting. And Sounds like it could be good. It's more. It's kind of a, a little bit of a dark comedy. Like it's more. Um, oh, it's, it's yeah. a little. It's a little. It's, it's not. It's like PG thirteen. It's not like super gory or anything. It's. It's. But it's. Oh, fun. Well, then never mind. No, but it's. <laughs> but it's enjoyable. But, but I thought the same thing. I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be like. But it's actually pretty clever. And uh, Jessica Roth is the lead. She's really good. She's really cute. I'll watch um, it. I'll watch it. Uh, and so, but then there was a sequel called Happy Death Day to You, number two, you. It made a couple years later, and it's the same whole cast. And this time, it's one of the other, other supporting characters in the movie, from the first movie, that starts having a time loop. No, oh, no. And, 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 and then same characters get involved, but now there's more to it. And what's interesting is that the first movie is kind of more like a cosmic mystery of why this is happening. Uh-huh. The second movie is actually more actual sci-fi. There's really? a reason why it's happening, and cool. and it's it's also fun. Now this, the sequel is not quite as good. It's a lot more comedic. Some of the comedy is a lot more forced. Oh no! But but it's still it's still clever, and the characters are very likable, and I end up enjoying both films. And like again, it's it's it, you know they're movies made really for like teenagers today and stuff. But I I have to admit I really enjoyed it, and I think there's might be plans to do a third one too. But um anyway, if you have a chance, Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to you. Pretty fun, and they're it's and they literally in the movie say, "Hey, have you seen Groundhog Day?" It sounds like it's like Groundhog Day, like they <laughs> they reference wow. that. You know, it's it's right. uh, but it's, it's fun. I would I, would, I say check them out. Just a I'm good time time loop film. I'm definitely okay. putting that on my list, and that that storyline has some elements in common with this replay book by Ken Grimwood. Oh, okay, which, cool. Which I think I think Matt, you know, you, that other I'm book, that I, you got to check out this book. It's really and, great. And Happy Death Day has it has a dark humor to it too because there's a certain point where like she realizes she has to keep killing herself to get to the next bit. so she has these creative ways of just committing suicide and coming back. Wait, wait, but, wait! But like, she, she kills herself. I thought she. Well, she she knows she, she realizes after a certain point wait, instead of waiting for the killer to kill her again, oh, I'm gonna kill myself like, oh. to get to the. But and like she, she realizes that like her her body is starting to feel the effect of like multiple you know generations and mm. the time loop is yeah. you know so. It's cool. It's fun. Interesting. Nice one, Sean. Yeah, check out. Sure. James, you want to give us one? Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you back to 1989 uh, in Japan, where Toho Studios released a really good Godzilla movie. It's Godzilla versus Biollante, but it didn't perform well. So they were wondering how to how to make the next sequel more commercial. And the franchises that were doing really well at the time were the Back to the Future sequels and the Terminator sequels. So they made a movie, Toho made a movie called Godzilla vs. King Ghidra, where they brought back the King Ghidra monster. And it was derivative as hell because, uh, you know, there was time travel and it was a very Terminator-like, uh, T2-like android 
but it's a lot of fun. It is so one of, fun. It's one of my favorite yeah. movies from the whole franchise. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. Yes. But I love it. And, I agree. Uh, it concerns uh, these time traveling aliens, I guess, who, who come back to present day to warn Japan that these monsters are going to cause this damage and they're posing as protectors. So what they want to do is to go back to World War II and remove a dinosaur from Lagos Island that's supposedly going to become Godzilla that's after right. the H-bomb is dropped. Supposedly. Um, right. Suppose, well, yeah. I mean, I, I, guess, I guess it does. It does it become does. Godzilla. Yeah. But they are not uh, sincere in what they want to do. Damn and those tur- future people. <laughs> <laughs> it, it turns out that in the future, Japan becomes this mega superpower that's more <laughs> powerful than any of the other countries. And what these aliens really want to do is undermine Japan by creating an even more powerful monster, King Ghidra. Wait, wait, so, are they aliens or are they from the future? Yeah, I think they're... they're from, no, they're, they're not aliens. They're from the future. Yeah, okay. yeah. They, and they fly yeah. like in a spaceship, but they're, right, they're like right, future. Right, right. Yeah. Right, right, right. They're alien to us. Yeah. Right, right. I think they're called Futurians or something. Yeah. But, um, Futurians. Yeah. Jake? Huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm, down with, I'm down with Futurians. <laughs> You'd think they'd find an easier and less complicated way to... to to, to undermine the Japanese yeah. economy. <laughs> it's like, it seems really, like a lot of work. It does. It's like a Rube well, Goldberg. Build, build, wow. build a robot and the fucking <laughs> yeah, like what? And, they yeah. plant these. They they plant these three little um, beasts called Dorats. These three Dorats, little winged beasts yeah. that are supposedly after the radiation going to morph into King Ghidra. So I mean, right. they're they're going through a lot of hoops. And, <laughs> yeah, they really, uh, really are. <laughs> and they're really but, counting on Godzilla not defeating this other monster. I mean, there's other ways they could have done this, but <laughs> yes. anyway, it's it's absurd, and and they also play with the time travel in a way that it makes you really kind of scratch your head. It's like, well, wait a second, this doesn't really make sense. But you, you know, not a good your plan. brain on hold. Yeah. No, time no. travel gets right. tricky no matter who's in charge. Sure, exactly. that's true. Yeah. but <clears throat> just for the fact that you get to see for the first time Mecha King Ghidorah. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> it's I mean, pretty freaking <clears throat> fun. And we're still in the days of guys in suits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the effects are fantastic. The miniatures, you know, yes. they create modern Tokyo and the battles. They're, they're wonderful. Yeah. And uh, doesn't and, he have one of, one of the heads, the actual head and neck is a mechanical one? Yeah, the, the middle yeah. head is like the robot. Middle. Well, because yeah. in the first battle, Godzilla, you know, decimates Ghidra's middle head. So That's they have right. to right. rebuild it. The Futurians have to give him a, you know, a metal mecha head. Right. Uh, it's 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 wonderful, and it did. Who doesn't did enjoy better. Mecha Head? Yeah. <laughs> I think if we and, just put the Japanese in charge of the future, I think we're all going to be we're, happier. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. Just for the to get really good egg salad. <laughs> egg salad. Yeah, those egg salad sandwiches in Japan. Um, oh Lawson's? Well, that, oh, you that don't like eggs, egg salad, right? You don't like egg salad? Know. See, you just made something that was sounded so wonderful sound so disgusting. <laughs> oh, you don't like egg salad? Seconds. No, it's repulsive. It shouldn't even Love be mentioned on the show. Jake, what do you think about egg salad <laughs> from the future? I feel like if we go into the future, egg salad is going to be like the egg salad, that rectangular egg salad thing that they serve at a sushi restaurant. <laughs> That's from right. the future. That is okay. not a thing from now. No, All right. That's, uh, that's okay. That's great. That's awesome. So um, <laughs> should we have Matt uh, bring one up? Well, okay. I mean, I asked you about Dr. Who's. That's not really your turn. I no. Want, I want you yeah. to bring up a film. I want, I want to give you your moment because <laughs> you haven't had enough moments, so. <laughs> you know what? You're oh, right that about seems that. sarcastic. No, 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 no. It's, it's very no. futuristically sarcastic. I, yeah, yeah, I never know with Larry, but it keeps Larry's me on my toes. Larry's got a bit of a mean streak. He no, no, does, there's, there's and, no I, mean and, and I kind of love it. You know what no, I mean? We, like, we, it's we, like we, I'm his, his sub and he's my dom. <laughs> I, no, I want to know what you want to bring up. Well, I'm going to throw in one that I don't think we've ever talked about before. I saw it as a really young kid. And I had this vague memory of it. I think I might have seen it at one of those. Remember they would do like the children's matinee? 
<gasps> yeah. Right. Remember that? It was like a series of them. You could yes. pre purchase all these tickets, and each weekend it'd be a different movie. So, this is a movie that is a Czechoslovakian movie. Ooh. And it's from 1955. And this movie really stuck with me. And I think when I saw it, it was dubbed with English actors. Because I, initially I thought it was an English film, but doing some research, yeah, it turns out to be Czech. It's called The Journey to the Beginning of Time. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because it's not a super action-packed movie. It's about these four kids, <gasps> and they're in a rowboat, and they're just going along what turns out to be a river of time. Huh. And they go through this cave, this strange cave, and they end up on the other side of the cave in this prehistoric primeval world. Oh, I love it. You know, they, ha- they r- have some run-ins with various dinosaurs, but what's interesting about it is that it seems like as they go down this river, they go through different periods of time. So they get to see dinosaurs that would not necessarily all be living in the same time period. So mm. it's, it's really cool. And if, if I remember, there's a kid who has a book that's all about dinosaurs and he's really yeah. into dinosaurs. And so whenever, you know, they run into a new one, they go, oh, what's, what's the book say? And they'll go into the book and they'll find the dinosaur. So it, it almost has this sort of documentary educational film kind of feel to it. Mm-hmm. But it's really, I thought it was re- done really well. I think it's a well shot movie. I think if you look for it now, you might not find the best prints because I think it's one of those films that ends up on like cheap, DVD or video, but yeah, it's worth, right. it's worth looking at. There's a um, innocent charm to it that I, yeah. I really like. Yeah. For kids, man, oh. I remember seeing this and as a oh, kid. Oh, you do? Okay. Loved, oh yes. As a kid who just loved dinosaurs. I mean, to me, this, this film was everything. And what was really neat was in Santa Cruz at the Santa Cruz beach boardwalk, there is a ride called the time train, which is a train that goes through this oh. big one cave and all inside were dinosaurs and i used to think of myself as reliving you know living through that movie in that the movie train. right instead yeah of, instead of a boat it was a train now granted some of the dinosaurs and they, they actually put cave people and they put painted uh black light stuff on them and made them a little funky and goofy in the but, ride but still in the ride oh, yeah. and and it, i wanted it to be more realistic but i loved going on that ride because it, it was as if i was living that movie and who, as kids, who doesn't dream of wanting to go in a boat and go down some stream or something and encountering dinosaurs? Sure. Well, Larry, what about Disneyland? The, uh, we all want to have train. an adventure. We all want to have an adventure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Have we all gone on the train in Disneyland where you go into prehistoric Earth? Prehistoric and, times. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> That's awesome. And that is so... Music. Yeah, Bernard Herman, right? Bernard Herman, right. yes. Mr. Yes. Island. Mr. Island, yeah. yes. I love that because it's like the most underrated ride. I think most people don't even know that that's going to happen. Yeah, because you know you're what, just riding man? this train around yeah. Disneyland. Oh, and people go, oh, oh I this don't is nice. Go yes, you don't want to go on a train. Oh, I don't think I've been on this. <gasps> oh, Jake, oh. dude. Jake? You, oh, next time we should, you know, when we can go to Disneyland because I love <laughs> Disneyland. But that's one of these rides that I think people just don't know that as you go on this train ride, it'll go down and you go into this area where you go back in time. Correct me if I'm wrong, Larry, but there's just regular animals at first. Well, it, it's like when you start to go through the one tunnel, it's your trip through the Grand Canyon. Right. Okay. And, right. and what's weird is the animals are not animatronic. They're stuffed animals. They've been there since it was built back in the, the 60s. That part of it, the, the, the and, Grand Canyon and part. Hear, and you yeah. hear the do, 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 do. Yeah. And, and they talk about the Grand Canyon. And then they said, but then millions of years ago, then you hear the da, the mysterious island music. Yes. And you go into this prehistoric land. And Jake, what I would say to you is many people, when you go to Disneyland, oh, I want to go to Star Wars land. I want to go on Space right. I want yeah. to go on the matter. That's all the action rides. Take the time to go on the train. You get a lovely view of the whole park. But when you go through that, Matt, it's like that sequence. Do you see the dinosaur sequence? I would. I stayed on the train to go through it like yeah, three yeah. times. No, yeah. it's, it's wonderful. I, I couldn't get enough of that. Just everything about it, like the lighting. And those dinosaurs are animatronic. 
and and there's it's a big Jake. It's a big scene. It's a giant yes. scene. For the first one's you'll see Triceratops, oh. and there's a little baby one cr- crawling out of an egg, uh-huh. and then you see a giant pterodactyl it's laying its wings. But then you get there's a giant swamp, and it's huge, and you see the giant Diplodocus, you know, and he's chewing his chewing his grass, and he's as the same grass he's been chewing since the 1960s, and he's chewing it, chewing, and there's real water, and then you get to a sequence there where there's a Triceratops and a Tyrannosaurus Rex battling with lava and it's just it, it, it's everything a kid would love it's, it's wonderful we've really got to go it's soon impressive. before they tear this down i know no, 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 no. i know yeah. 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 yeah yes i i look i believe granted there are some things that they have torn down but look peter pan right is still there alice in wonderland still there i think that the dinosaur sequence they're going to keep you know i sure uh, hope so yeah, yeah. Yeah. So well, Matt, Matt, it's cool that you brought up that movie because that same filmmaker who made Journey to the Beginning of Time, Carl Zeman. Carl he was Zeman. this guy. He made this great film. I think I've talked about it before called The Fabulous World of Jules Verne. Yes. And it's right. like this yeah. co- combination of like live action and stop motion, and you know his his stuff looks like kind of like old etchings, and it's really cool. But uh, yeah, the guy's really really cool filmmaker, very creative. This film won a bunch of international film awards. Right, right. But it's one that uh, deserves a look. Cool. That's cool. Yeah. Nice right. one, Matt. Jake. Yeah. Jake? Take it away. Well, look, I've, I'm torn because I want to mention movies that have come up since the last time we talked, famous ones. I want to mention the classics like Terminator and 12 Monkeys that we haven't talked about. Sure. I want to talk about uh, the Hot Tub Time Machine movies, which I love. Oh, I, yeah. I, the first one um, especially. is first one's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I I think they're both great. But well, what why don't we why don't we talk about the let's throw some comedy. Let's talk about that hot tub uh, time travel movie. Well, I feel like those are those are examples of time travel movies and modern kind of Saturday Night Live comedy type movies. Right. It's a great mash of those two cultures together, in spite of the fact that uh, uh, what's his name. Um, say anything what's his name john uh, cusack. cusack john yeah. cusack the, despite the fact that john cusack has lost his mind and thinks that uh, 5g is causing the varinus <laughs> outbreak um yeah the well, hot tub time machine yeah. is such a great they're so great rob cordry is terrific um, it's super yeah it's really christian funny. glover from the two or three classic time machine movies time travel movies uh, that we know is is funny in these two it's a, they're just funny movies, but then the time travel, the spoof on the time travel, I mean, without Hot Tub Time Machine, I don't think there would be Rick and Morty. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. interesting. So, so I, I'm sorry, as, as someone who has, not, I'm sorry, I'm going to go out on a limb, I have not seen Hot Tub Time Machine. I'm, I know. Really? I'm not, I'm, and I'm who not, can blame you? Because I, I'm not. That I can cool blame him. Guy. I'm going to blame him now. <laughs> no, 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 I blame no. you. I, so let me come to Larry's how, defense. <laughs> how? No, no, no. How? How does the hot tub become a time machine? It just does. Well, how does anything <laughs> become a time machine? How does a river become a time machine? How does a police phone box become a time machine? How, how, how does a DeLorean but, become a time machine? Oh, oh shit bro, happens. No, no, shit no, happens, no, man. Yeah. No, no. That, time everything happens. That, no, everything that you mentioned happened with science. <laughs> okay, so, so you think that the hot tub is your time? Do you and remember? Kind of say, no, no, Jake? the guys just go, hey, the hot tub, it's a time machine. But, hey, well, I Jake, hope that you, you remember, remember how Matt, it... but, but, but the answer that I would give is that they explained it at the time and I bought it. Look, if you're not ready right. to buy yeah. into time travel. Yeah. It's a movie called yeah. Hot Tub Time Machine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No matter what they came up with, I would have went with it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Was the hot tub comfortable? Yes. Oh my God. The hot tub was comfortable. And the guys who go, well, first of all, it's John Cusack. Uh, now I can't Crispin remember. Crispin Glover anybody. is in it. Uh, but No, but uh, the guys in the time oh, machine. Oh, Rob, that, so that would be John Rob Cusack. Cor- Craig Robinson. Yeah, Craig Robinson, Rob Corddry, uh, John like Cusack. Clark they're, Duke. They're super funny guys. And okay. then they, they've all got different agendas for wanting, once they realize that they're traveled in time, They've all right. got different ideas of how, how to use this to their advantage or not use it or, right, or right. what they want to accomplish. 
it just makes for a fun thing. I feel like because the <clears throat> that title of the movie was so stupid, like right. no thank. The title was so such a no thank you for so many sophisticated people right. that they didn't give it a chance. And if right. you and if you watched Hot Tub Time Machine, I'll be interested to talk to you, Larry, after you watch it. Yeah, which I hope you will to see if you enjoyed it. I mean, obviously everything is not for everybody, but I, I think that this is a movie that rises above the expectations in a way that's kind of un- unbelievable. Yes, Larry, sure. I guess said, like, you, you, you have a problem with time machine comedy? Like, I mean, what's, no. you know? No, 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 no. I just like it when things make, make sense, you know, or if there's some kind of explanation, like... Well, there is someone... an explanation. Okay. It, it involves, there's a Russian energy drink called Chernobyl. <laughs> and somehow it gets on, there's a console or something like that. Anyway... Yeah, the, well, so the explanation Jay, me, then is, is in fact, a shorthand joke. It's like, bullshit, bullshit, time travel is real. We got in that time. Right, we right, back in time. right. Let me ask you a question. So, Jake, you're a world-renowned comedian. You're, like, really big and stuff. <laughs> like, when you travel around the world and you stay in hotels all over the place, when you go into those hot tubs, do you ever think to yourself, I'm reliving hot tub time machine? Or do you like it that much that you can think about it and talk about it and go, I'm reliving it? I'm not sure I completely understand your question. And I also think that uh, your impression of hotels on the road is a little different than the reality because there's not as many hot tubs available in hotels as you travel around as you might think. And, and they're less, they're less attractive than you like, but in, in the movie, in the movie, they are, they're in a deluxe suite of a, of a ski resort hotel where there's a fancy hot tub that they have the use of. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so now it makes sense, right, Larry? But, no, yeah, no, no. But look, sense. if you're asking if I ever fantasize when I'm getting into a hot tub about time travel, <laughs> I would say that's 50-50. Half the time I do, half the time I don't. <laughs> <laughs> an, I would assume how relaxed you are. Yeah. It's a great sure. question. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Well, <laughs> one, of like the, that's one, of, one of the fun things about that movie is that the first one anyway, is that they traveled back to 1984. And we can all remember 1984, you know, and it's uh, someone's right, right. watching, someone's watching Red Dawn, you know, it's like, oh, right, yeah. Yeah. or 1986 or whatever. And it's like, wow, it's the music. That's part of the fun is that it brings you right back to that specific time what, that we lived through. You know, well, right. and they live through their time traveling back to time to their own. Right. <laughs> right. Their path. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't John Cusack at one point wear the say anything outfit? Does he? In that uh, movie? Really? Maybe. I think he does. I can't remember. I, I loved it though. And yeah, John Cusack's a little bit of a nutball, but I do enjoy his work. <laughs> well, we've got yeah. to separate the art from the artist. Of course. Especially right. when it's just nut job stuff. I yeah. mean, when it's sexism <laughs> or racism, then okay, we can. Yeah, no, if you're just yeah, crazy, yeah. then that's fine. <clears throat> yeah. Right. right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I really wanted to bring up another movie. I hope I'm not cheating. Go ahead. Yeah, you're, our, right? you're our guest. Go for it. Are we good? Okay, good. Have you guys seen this movie? And I thought I watched it on a plane, but then when I searched Netflix, maybe I watched it on Netflix because it got suggested to me. Time Trap? I don't think no, I know this. I've not heard of this. Time Trap? What? Like what year? Time Trap, I think, is a movie from 2017-ish. And, Time uh, Trap? Time Trap, yeah. and it's. A I don't f- know this one. It's a fun movie on Netflix that you can watch right now if you want to. And maybe I should just talk about the setup since you guys haven't Please. seen it. Yeah. I mean, sure. this guy goes to the mountains to figure out what the hell is going on. And he sees this cave where he looks into the cave and he sees a guy dressed like a prospector who's kind of paralyzed, frozen. And when he walks into the cave, he finds out that time is passing at different... At the outside, I think I've the, seen this. outside the cave, time is passing at the rate that that we pass time. But inside mm-hmm. the cave, it's passing much faster. So, so this prospector has only been in there for to him a couple of minutes because he's super slowed down. But actually, it's been decades. Hmm. And then the further in you go to the cave, the the more that compression happens. I've seen this. I know that. Yes, interesting. And, uh, and he's with a bunch of like. There's some. There's some they, kids. There's, some, there's kids. some kids, there's some and he's kids. going to investigate. There's outside of the cave. There's a there's a weird kind of van from the 1960s. Right. That, like yes. where did the people go? Those people vanished. Where are they? 
and uh, he's going he goes into this cave and and what happens after that if you guys had seen it we could talk about it but since you haven't seen it maybe we can come back again and talk yeah. about this movie time trap it's a good movie in the future i huh. like this a lot I've never never heard of it and yeah. I, lo- I, lo- I love the ending yes yes and, you know that, and that can launch you into a whole Anyway, please. I don't want to. I don't want right. to talk about you this more. Spoil but, it. Me neither. But spoil please it. watch Time Trap, and then let's get together again and talk about that. Maybe when we're on the river cruise ride at <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> Disneyland. Yeah. You know, Jake, I want to thank you. It's always great when someone brings up something that that we're not familiar with. So, yeah, like my, my yeah. wife. My wife loves time travel movies, so if this is one we haven't seen, so. Well, and, and then may I also talk about a movie that that I think is also on Netflix, and it will probably this maybe is more people have seen it. Have there's two kind of rom commy or romantic y movies: The Time Traveler's Wife, which I think people are probably familiar yeah, with. I've never oh, seen right. it, but I know of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know but, of it. Which no, is go ahead. It, it's time a, Traveler's it's a wife. terrific book and a fun movie. Okay, um, and it's l- both light and dark and romantic and tragic, and then about time. Hey, do you know what about time? It's with uh, no. Is that any good? It's about uh, what is it? Brendan Gleeson's son is the star with Ra- Rachel McAdams, and yes. it's a rom com. And he realizes that he's able to travel in time. And what does he want to use with that gift? Bill Nye's in it. Um, oh. That's another one that that's kind oh. of a fun time travel movie, but also a romantic comedy, much like uh, dare I say Groundhog Day. Okay. I mean, cool. it's not a similar plot to Groundhog Day, but it but it has that. It's it's kind of a good date movie. It's a good sure. movie to watch with kids. Sure. About time, I think. I think it's a kid movie. I mean, I, it's been a little. It's been a year or two since I've seen it. Right. If you say that it's good, I'll I'll check it out. Yeah. Cool. But 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 see, you you bring up some really great time travel pieces. Look, it, just because it's it's got romance in it, that that's not a bad thing. I mean, nah. uh, I mean no, 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 man. I mean, <laughs> must everything must everything for you have to be like lightnings and blasters and stuff? I mean, lightnings and blasters. <laughs> lightnings. I mean, you know, I lightnings love lightning. and blasters. I, 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 <laughs> to watch a movie that doesn't have lightning. Oh, <laughs> forget okay, it. Okay, well, obviously. nudity and lightning. Okay. Okay. Well, well, Jake, you just threw out three. So that was really nice. Let me just throw out the big elephant in the room here. Okay. Okay, Okay, Let's hear it. Because I know, first of all, one of the biggest films of all time, you know, that had just broke box office records. And then I, of course, talking about Avengers Endgame from 2019. (sighs) Sure. Yeah. What? What? I thought I knew what you were going to say, Larry, and I didn't. But I love that movie. I love that movie. I- yes, and 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 it, although the film the the film is not it, it not it can't really stand alone by itself. You have to see Avengers: Infinity Wars first to try to set the whole thing. Some yes. really, you should see all of the Iron well, Man movies uh, Jake, and all the yeah. Marvel. Go through go through all of it. But, yeah, but but yes, I, I I but I will say this. I think everyone saw that film. But if you haven't seen it. I mean, it is absolutely spectacular. Time the time travel, travel stuff is great because they revisit past moments right. from the other films in different ways. And yeah, that's right. so cool. And what I wanted that's to fun. say is the whole film is not about time travel. Right, right. To kind of solve the problem that comes in the Infinity Wars movie, there's this discussion about how we can possibly use time travel to help solve these problems. Now, the thing that I love is all these time travel films that we've talked about – they all have certain rules. The great thing about Avengers Endgame was some of these rules were brought up as, well, time travel doesn't really work that way. For example, a lot of us, we haven't talked about it here, but the whole Back to the Future films, time is linear. It moves one way. If you go back and you mess it up, then it continues to move linear. Whereas in Endgame, it does not. It actually splits. This is the thing that's brought up. Someone brings up, well, can't we go back in time and kill, let's say, the evil character. And it's like, well, time travel doesn't work that way. I mean, it would splinter off and, and do a different time for that particular time, but right. our time would change. And so the whole concepts of time travel, I thought were fantastic. And, yeah, and, cool. and how you follow it is just, and how, like Sean says, how they go back in time to various points in all of these other movies 
is just spectacular. Not, not just that. They, they, they recreate moments and do something different. Like, I can't remember which movie it was. Maybe it was Winter Soldier. They had that great scene in the elevator with Captain America. Captain America. And they yes. redo that scene. It's yeah, that's good. A, com- a completely different result. And that is so cool. There's and they, us- like, they bring that Robert Redford, like, in the movie. Yes. Like, it's so cool. Yes. And what's also mm-hmm. wonderful is when a character actually, unfortunately, encounters himself where Captain America yeah. encounters, and Captain America from the it's past so cool. encounters itself, Captain America from the future. And the banter between them, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Then you think to yourself, how, how, it's the same guy. How can he beat himself? You know, and it's, <laughs> it's just yeah. terrific. That's a good one. Yeah. Hey, did you guys watch the show Travelers on Netflix? It's on Netflix now, but I think it was originally on, a, on some kind of Netflix. No, my wife may have. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Eric Mc- Eric McCormick from Will and Grace. It's a pretty fun sci-fi show with hmm. time travel elements. And I think I can say this. I'll say first, spoiler alert, but the spoiler happens early. You find this out. So it's people from the future who are traveling back in time. But the way they can travel back in time is they find someone in the historical records who's about to die and right before they die, the people from the future take over their their body and their life. Oh, and, oh wow. that's and a great so, idea. And so they have to inhabit the identity of the person's body that they take over while also advancing the agenda from the future, which which is it's post-apocalyptic, and they're trying to prevent the apocalypse from happening. And huh, interesting. Uh, it's a really fun series, and it was canceled for its time, pun intended. <laughs> um, but the way they wrap up the end of the series, there's three seasons of it. The, the way they wrap up the end of it, the writers deal with the fact that the show's canceled is terrific. And then you can act- okay. actually go on Eric McCormick's social media sites and listen to his response to the cancellation of the show. Okay, it's a fun, yeah. That's a fun thing to do I'm if, sorry. as we're all cool. kind of plagued with spare time right now. Jake, what's this called again? <laughs> I'm sorry. What's it called again? It's called, uh, I'm just Travelers. going back. Travelers. Travelers. Travelers on Netflix. Travelers. And I can see this now? Yes, you can see it now. You can start watching it now. Cool. cool. Uh, I guess I got to do uh, a hot tub time travel first. Uh, Well, you can do them in whatever order, but Hot Tub Time Machine only takes you an hour and a half. And Travelers, there is three seasons of it. Yeah, that's a lot of shows. All right. Hey, Sean, want to give us one? Yeah, this one is um, maybe one of the most obscure time travel movies that I've come across. And I've always heard about this movie. I never saw it, but you can see it pretty easily. I think it's public domain. You can see it like on YouTube or elsewhere. But this is a movie made in... 1973, directed by Peter Fonda. <gasps> oh, no. And it's called Idaho Transfer. Oh, yeah. This is a very, low, very low budget, very weird movie, but kind I've of heard of this. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's it's this movie where it's, it's in the, some kind of unnamed, you don't know what time, it's some kind of future period where you don't know what exactly, but there's some kind of ecological problem with the earth, whether it's food or fuel or whatever it is. And there's this group of uh, scientists out in like in somewhere in Idaho, I guess in Idaho, there's this um, <laughs> national monument called like the craters of the moon. There's a whole volcanic area. So uh-huh. it's all like, you know, um, dried, you know, lava rocks. And there's this, these scientists out there with they had started to do some kind of experimenting with matter transference, but out of that accidentally, they created time travel. Okay. So they find out that only young people, like people like in their 20s or younger, can survive this trip into the future. Great. So you have these scientists and a bunch of these hippie types, you know, young people who uh, travel into the future to kind of like scout it. And you know, the idea is they're going to kind of try to repopulate the planet and just do lots of research and stuff. And the, the time travel itself is very simple, but really effective. It's it's super basic, but it's like they just you, they just sit in this room on this like metal plate, 
Mm. It starts out, you see these young girls, of course, they have to take off their pants. Because, <laughs> because, of course. So there are so these young teenage girls in their underwear because they can't have anything metal, like zippers. They have to take off no, their shoes. And put them God, no, no. So, I, I, didn't, I didn't make the rules. That's just the way time <laughs> yeah, travel so works. So they have to put those in a separate compartment. You know, they have to be just like in their underwear when they travel through. Oh, and, damn. But the, the time travel effect is literally they just sit on the slab, press some buttons. And you know in the paranormal activity movies when they do the thing where the girl is sitting over the guy's bed and they do this time lapse and she's just standing still, but it's like kind of really sped up and she just kind of moves all jerky. Yes. It's kind of like that. They, they kind of start doing like that and then they slowly dissolve away and they appear in this, in this future time. It's like about 50 or 60 years in the future. Hmm. And so they're doing that, but what happens is they're doing it secretly. They don't want the government to know that, that they've created time travel. So they're doing it secretly, but then the government is, is catching on to them. And the problem is there, there's the danger of the government is going to shut down the machines. And so the teenagers are getting, they're stuck in the future time with no way back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the idea is that they're going to repopulate the world because there's nobody left in the future. And there's the no problem, zippers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. The problem is, one of the, re- one of the effects of the time travel they find out is that everybody is sterile. <laughs> so oh. they're stuck in the future. Heaven. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> one of them, one of them, one of the girls starts going nuts, and it's like it's done. It's very leisurely paced. You know, we're talking 1973, directed by Peter Fonda, a bunch of teenagers. So we're talking a very like early 70s hippies vibe to it. You got young, a very young Keith Carradine is in it in a small part, uh, mm-hmm. but it's kind of interesting, and it has a very dark and pretty cool ending. But it's it takes its time. Like it has a really intriguing beginning and a really great ending. The middle is a lot of like wandering around talking about, you know, when you have babies and stuff like this, but it is really unique and it's actually really well directed. It's a, it's the only film that Peter Fonda directed that he wasn't in. Um, he does. Oh. And uh, I, I find a little thing online about him talking about the movie too. It was like done really cheaply. Everybody's pretty much immature actors. Like he got right. one of the lead girls. He, he found from like, he was watching in a, he was, she was in a coffee shop and taking orders and it was all crazy. And he loved the way she was very calm and soothing. And he like, he, he asked her to read a script and hired her. How uh, weird. It's, it's really interesting. I mean, like I say, it's not for everybody, but the time travel is just accepted and done, I guess, as I described it, very basic, but it works. It's really effective. And it's kind of, some of the performances are pretty done real, very realistically. It's like, you're just trying to adapt to this new world and what are you going to do? And it's, I don't know, it's just really fascinating. But uh, again, it's called Idaho Transfer. Don't expect lots of explosions or car chases or, or, li- like or lightning. <laughs> and where do you, where do you but, go to watch? Where do you go to watch that? Uh, you you can literally find it on YouTube. It's it's on like every public domain DVD release. Because mm. I think what happened was it, like it, it fell into public domain. I, I think it was released for a couple of weeks, and then the the company that released it went bankrupt. So you know, but yeah, you can find it pretty much anywhere. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's like I said, pretty obscure, but an interesting take on the time travel formula. Okay. Ne- wow. Neat one, Sean. James? On about the 50-year anniversary of the Kennedy assassination, Stephen King published a novel called 112263. Right. And it's about a main school teacher uh, whose friend owns a diner. And in the pantry of the diner, there is a... I guess a wormhole that takes you back to 1962. And his friend tells him about the wormhole and asks him to use it to go back in time and prevent the assassination. Uh huh. Mm. And this was made into a miniseries by Hulu uh, in 2016. And it was pretty good. But the book itself, it's an interesting story. I think King spends a little too much time on the details because you've got this character, you know, he's going back and forth. He's doing a lot of research. He's following Lee Harvey Oswald. And and I'm sure King did a ton of research for this story. Um, Mm -hmm. Ultimately, uh, what the focus is on is uh, a love story, which a lot of these time travel movies do tend to get into. Kind of a sad one. He falls in love with a woman who is in an abusive relationship and he, you know, becomes, uh, you know, her lover and a protector. And I won't give any spoilers as to whether or not he does foil Lee Harvey Oswald, but it's it's a satisfying enough read. You know, for a long novel, I, I think it certainly could have been pared down. But 
I recommend it for anyone who hasn't already read it. I, I think it delivers on the goods as long as you're interested in the subject matter. And the, the whole time travel element, you know, there are a lot of details as far as, you know, exactly how, you know, how he needs to go through time and what he experiences when he goes through time and all the, you know, the different things he has to consider when he goes back. Right. Um, he, he also throws in some of his Easter eggs. Like he, he goes back to the town in Maine where it takes place and he mm. encounters some of the kids from, from it only at that point they're teenagers because it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's that uh, point in time. Sure. And uh, Christine makes an appearance you know, oh, wow. before, before she's haunted, you know? Oh, um, do you think, uh, do you think, do you think Stephen King saw that Twilight Zone episode? Remember there's the Twilight Zone episode with Russell Johnson. I think it's called back there. Yeah. He goes back and tries to foil the, uh, yeah, the Lincoln, 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 Lincoln assassination. Right. assassination. assassination. You know. right. There, was a, there was also another Twilight Zone episode with Dana Andrews called No Time Like the Past, where he tries to assassinate Hitler. Right, that's right. Um, that was one of the hour-long ones from that season. But um, Is Walking Distance the one where he goes back and meets himself, the guy in the Twilight Zone episode, where he goes back and meets himself as a kid? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the yeah. gig young one, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. That's a yeah. great one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway, eleven twenty two sixty three. So you know, check it out. Nice Am one, I? James. Am I up? Yeah. Uh, you know, give us some lightning, Matt. <laughs> 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 well, as you guys all know, I'm a gigantic fan of the show Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there was an episode that they did in 1995, and it's a two-parter, and it's called Past Tense. Past and Tense past tense and it's really interesting because so the story is they've got the defiant and they're going to earth and then cisco and dr Bashir and jadzia dax beam down and through some mishap they go through time okay and they materialize in san francisco in 2024 <laughs> and get oh, this oh wow yeah 2024 and get this that's just four years from now. Yes. That is, yeah. Yes, Jake. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just four saying I would like to. years from now. Spoiler alert. I just want to find out what happens <laughs> after this shit that we're in right now. Yeah, well, right. you may like and not like it. <laughs> because when they are beamed in and they go through time, it knocks them out. And when they wake up, Cisco and Bashir are missing their comm badges and, you know, they're trying to figure out what's going on and they gradually put it together. But in this future, or I'm sorry, in, in our future, their past, mm-hmm. San Francisco has this giant homeless problem. Oh. Weird. Homeless problem. And so what they've decided to do with the homeless and people who are mentally ill and homeless is they put them in this place called the Sanctuary District. The sanctuary. It's a fenced off ghetto area. That's where all the poor, the sick, and people, no people who don't have a lot of money or out of work, they put them there to get them out of the way. So wow. regular successful folk don't have to look at them. We need to implement this ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Jake, come on now. I just, <laughs> uh, well, it's supposed to be finished, Larry, by 2024. <laughs> yeah, and I, we haven't I even know. started. Well, well, know, well, well uh, okay. Well, this is a little it's, sensitive these are, area. These are jokes, Larry. I, I don't really know. Yeah, he's not, he's, not, oh, he's oh. not writing the future. Okay. He's... <laughs> right. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Sorry. So anyway, yeah. So what happens so, now? So there... Since they don't have any ID, they don't have anything, Cisco and Bashir end up being put in this sanctuary district where you get like a car that will allow you to get food. But when it comes to a place to sleep, you have to just find a building. It's almost like Escape from New York where you, you're thrown in there and then you got to just find a space for yourself. Mm-hmm. But because of the overcrowding, there really isn't any. And, you know, they're just trying to get out of there or trying to find Jadzia Dax, who they've split up with. When she wakes up, she's helped by this guy who's like a really rich media mogul. So through her side of the story, you get to find out what the, you know, the more well-to-do people, how their life is. Mm. And everyone's kind of a dick and they look down on all the homeless people and, you know, kind of like, you know, they deserve that. And it's an interesting piece of speculative fiction that 
I mean, my God, this is 1995. <laughs> and they kind of called it in a lot of ways. Yeah. Oh just, a, just a quick poll amongst us, non-scientific. So 2020, which is now to us in our timeline, 2020 to 1995, would you say there are more or less assholes now? <laughs> more. Yeah, more. I, I, you know what I'd say, Jake? I feel that some people out there maybe have held in their asshole Ness. And <laughs> mm. for some reason over the past few years feel like, you know, I think it's okay for me to let it out. You yeah. know? I think you might be right, which yeah. is which is to it's sort of to say that our data from nineteen ninety five is not really reliable. Yeah. You know, there were some assholes there that were pretending not to be assholes, and now yeah. there's much less incentive to pretend not to be an <laughs> that's, asshole. That's really <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah. Let your asshole flag fly. Yeah. Uh, but it, but could be, is, uh, it, it could be roughly the same, but it seems like more now because of that. Sure, <clears throat> sure. But this is really a great two-parter, and uh, I believe it's season three. But it's, it's good. It's really it's good. season and, three? Yeah. Okay, so that's season three of? See, of the Deep Space, Space Nine. Nine. See, because Matt and I, we've had a discussion. I'm one of these guys who I, I started to watch it for the first season. You know, it didn't hook me in, so then I let it go. And then Matt says, Larry, you got to stick with it. And it seems like as time went on, these episodes just got better and better and better. So we've talked about this. I need to go and revisit this uh, is Deep yeah. Space it's Nine. it's really yeah. good. You've got you a know. big to do list now, Larry. Because... I do. <laughs> you, know, you know the interesting thing that Matt brings up, though, and we've talked about this on other shows. The great thing about Star Trek and how they've been able to successfully tell things about our past. You know, and they're using the future to kind of talk about it, and it's it, mm. Star Trek is just great in that respect. So that's and also Deep Space Nine did some pretty controversial things that it doesn't really get credit for. I mean, really just the makeup of the cast when you have a black captain, he's a commander at first and then he becomes a captain, Mm -hmm. but, uh, and you've got strong female characters. There's a really great documentary that I saw and uh, it was a crowdfunded thing that's got Jeffrey Combs is in it and all the original cast members. It's called what we left behind What We Left Behind. Yeah, and it's a really neat way if you're like, well, I'm not sure if I should watch Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Watch this documentary. It'll get you excited about the show because it really puts it in perspective all the things that that show did. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful series, and I think that more and more people now, because it's starting to be shown on various channels, I think more people now are being exposed to it, and that's great. Well, it's interesting that in that context, like all sci-fi is time travel because it's people from the present trying to project themselves into the future. And then now... That's a really good point, yeah. Yeah. As you come into the future and look to the past's time travel to see how relevant it is, you really get a kind of a... When you watch those beginning, those the first Star Treks, the William Shatner Star Treks, and you see what the issues that w- they were talking about then in the yeah. context of pushing it into the future. It's interesting s- to see how we progressed or not progressed. To that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. When you look at the original Star Trek series, the episode City on the Edge of Forever, the one with Edith Keeler and Joan Collins. Oh, and, it's which so is, beautiful. And Harlan Ellison wrote the original story. And there's been some controversy over how that script was changed. But the way that episode was aired is still a really, really great piece of TV. And And do do you mind? It's such a great classic story for people who are not familiar with it. Can you give them the basic genesis of it? Because it's a wonderful, wonderful story. Well, they go to this planet where there's this thing called the Guardian of Forever, which is this time travel it looks like a lighted arc kind of a thing made of like this glowing stone yeah right and dr mccoy somehow gets a bad injection of something as an accident as an accident and goes and goes kind of crazy for a while and accidentally runs into the guardian of forever Mm -hmm. and is put in the past where he does something to change history we don't know what we don't know what and 
Kirk and everybody, they try to contact the Enterprise. It's gone. It, nothing. Nothing. Oh. Nothing. There's no subspace anything. It's all gone. They're just there alone. And they like, what the hell happened? Right. So the Guardian kind of helps them to understand that they need to go back in time if they want to, you know, fix anything. If so, they wanna, yeah. yeah. So that's what they do. And so Kirk and Spock decide, well, we're going to leave everybody else behind. And we're going to go and we're going to see if we can get McCoy and figure out what went wrong. But Matt, so that's great, what they do. There, yeah, but there's a great point when Kirk says to the others, he says, look, Spock and I, we're going to go through this. And I don't know if we're going to come back. And if we don't, you guys have to go through. You got to try it. So that's true. Yes, Matt, yeah. you're right. left with this thing. Oh my God, they may never see each other again. Right. That whole episode is just drenched with wonderful drama. And then when you find out what, because I don't want to give, if you've never seen this episode, you yes. don't want to give it any. But when you right. find no. out what <clears throat> McCoy has done, and then how it is, how it has to be fixed, right. oh. it's so great and it beautiful is. and tragic. Yes. And it's one of the, the greatest. Trolley, it's the trolley problem, if I remember. Well, let's just, let's just say that, Matt, when I saw this as, uh, the first time as a kid, it blew me away because I didn't know that this was going to happen. Right, it, yeah. It, 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 it was, I just wasn't familiar with this type of ending, you know? Right. And hey. it's, it's amazing. Hey, and is Jake, that- Jake, what's the trolley problem? Well, first of all, is this the episode that ends yeah. with the yeah. many such? <laughs> well, I think you can say, I think I can say this without fucking it up. Many such trips are possible. Yes, that yes. is true. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the trolley problem is is a thing where you can throw a lever and you'll kill one person or save five people, or you can throw a person off. And, you know, it's one of those where you're choosing... Uh-huh. Right. It's like lesser the classic of self-driving evil. car. Yeah. You, yeah. you prioritize the driver in, in, in a scenario where if you prioritize the driver's life in a self-driving car and he survives, but he kills 20 pedestrians, or do you, do you prioritize the pedestrians? Right. right. It's, that kind of a, it's that kind of a thing, I think. But maybe I'm wrong. Well, no, no. It's been a long time since I've seen it. No, no I would say that that's... the choices. Yeah, yeah choices. It's, that they it's have to kind make. of a, you know, the needs of the many... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it is considered probably one of the top five, if not the top three, classic Star Trek episodes. And it's, it's a beautiful, yeah, it's very good. beautiful, well written story by Harlan Ellison. Yeah. Matt, that was a nice one. Jake, how about you? You want to give us another one? Well, there's one that I feel like we have to talk about because of our current timeline that we're all sharing. And I get that <laughs> you, yeah. you guys remember the last one, and, and, and I. Uh, have forgotten that and maybe we talked about it then but it's more pertinent now in the now that we're all living sure with this coronavirus outbreak time travel movies we got to talk about 12 monkeys sure right, 12 right. monkeys yeah, yeah. based based uh based on the original 60s french short le jeté the jetty hmm. did you know that I didn't know the name of it, and I think uh-huh. I tried to look that. I tried to look that up. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, it's la jete. I think it's pronounced that way. La jete, L A G E T E E. La jete. Was was Bruce Willis in that one also? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That was the one done black and white, and all done with still photos. Yes. It's, mm. yeah, but it's basically the same story as uh, as Tor Just Monkey's. as good. But, Just but, as good. <laughs> You're, talking, yes, about the, you're talking about the Terry Gilliam one, right? Yeah. Yes, I am talking about the Terry Gilliam. Who? I mean, look, I love Terry Gilliam. I love Bruce Willis. I love Brad Pitt. This movie, I, I don't think I'm spoiler alerting it because if you don't know this movie, come on, you know this movie. If you're listening to this show, you know this movie. But it's a, it's about it's about this disease that happens in the future that decimates the human population. And they're trying to send time travelers back to find out how the hell this happened and how you can go back in time and try and prevent it. And I feel like that's sort of a, in a wish fulfillment fantasy, a movie that's, that's kind of relates to our times right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, totally. I like that. I like that movie. There's, a, you know, they elaborate and they have more going on in this film from the original story than the short. But uh, yeah, it's cool. It's uh, Gilliam at his the height of his directorial powers, just making 
I mean, it's, it's really enjoyable. I really it like it. It looks, it looks great too. Yeah. It's just the look at the cost, every it's so, it's so cool. The way that the time travel happens, you know, you were, as we talked about earlier with the hot tub time machine, you know, the, the way that the time travel happens is just so kind of weird and yeah. cinematic and art house and kind of mysterious and like, well, okay, I guess that's how that worked. And then that the characters are sort of disoriented by the time travel yeah, because yeah, it is yeah. so weird. Yeah. And uh, the people that they choose to do the time travel and why they're doing the time travel and what and how they bring information back. And there's a love story in it. And yeah, Brad right. Pitt is awesome. Look, yeah, Brad I don't, Pitt. that's where I, that's where I have to leave you. So I, I think his character for that movie is fine. Yeah, like, I it's, agree. it's supposed to be crazy and annoying. What's don't, with you? I don't, I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> you well, don't like it. Because he doesn't have, because he doesn't have lightning shooting. No lightning. No, no, he's right. Yeah, I was promised <laughs> lightning by Larry. And We're then I tune into this thing. I feel like we're all men of a certain age, and so yes. there's a reason for us all to be jealous of Brad Pitt. When, <laughs> sure. when he was hot, we were also hot, and true, uh, he true. kind of he really stole the spotlight from all of us at that yes. time. And so, yes, there's a natural jealousy that that we can all feel. Now. You know, maybe no, you're right. Uh, no, I admire the man. I admire him, and I re I respect him. He's you were hotter you know, than he was, though, Larry. No, 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 no. I've seen the pictures. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, good time. <laughs> but Jake, you really like Twelve Monkeys. I, I, I really did. I'm, I, I go. I'm getting that you maybe you didn't like it, Larry. But no, it's no, so on the contrary, you to be nice about that. No, no, I, I love it, and that's it's such a great time travel piece. I mean, yeah. And, and I have to tell you, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for putting so much emphasis and and detail into all the films that we've brought up. I really enjoyed it, but. Yeah. Yeah, but, oh, I love being here. I no, love being yeah. here. But but how how about we do how about we do a lightning round? Lightning you know? round. Lightning round. Let's throw let's throw like a, just a few titles out there. And so. Okay, but before we do the lightning round, let me just say that when people <laughs> tell you that they know the odds of being struck by lightning, the way they calculate that is they take the population of the world and they they divide the lightning strikes by yes. the population of the world. Yes. That's not really your odds of being struck by lightning because let's face it, if you never go outside, you can never be struck by lightning. And if you stay home from now until five years from now, you're never gonna get the coronavirus. So your odds of actually having these things happen are, anyway, I'm sorry, I, that's a little distracting. Let's go ahead with the lightning round, sorry about that. Well, thank you, thank you, Jake, that was very interesting. Thank you for that bit. public service announcement. So, so Jake, you just brought up 12 Monkeys. You got a, got a few you can throw at us, some other time travel movies that you really enjoyed. Okay, and this is, this is without feedback. I'm just blasting them out. Mm hmm Okay. Well, I feel Maybe like... Maybe a little feedback, right? Yeah, a little, yeah, a little something. Okay, yeah. don't, well, don't number one, the, the reason that we're even talking about time travel movies in 2020, in my mind, is because of one of my personal influences and just an awesome guy arnold schwarzenegger the terminator that's sure that movie kind of made time put time travel on the map so to speak to mix metaphors with time and space but those movies to me are really important yeah. and yep. harlan ellison let's not forget that's yeah right. yeah and jake you know that story right you know the harlan ellison connection between no go ahead you tell oh me. matt matt you want to fill fill him in they're making this movie and then you might even Terminator. know more of the details. Yeah. They're making Terminator, but um, Harlan Ellison gets wind that this movie, the plot line is basically taken from a number of things that he did. One of them being the episode soldier soldier right. in the outer limits mm -hmm. where there is a warrior from the future who gets sent back in time and he's being hunted by another soldier. So right. anyway, there was enough uh, wrangling when it came to the lawyers. There was going to be a lawsuit. There yeah. was going to be a lawsuit. And eventually what he got was, didn't he get money and the credit, right? N no. Yeah. Or was it just the credit? My understanding that there was no money. There was, it was no money. It was acknowledgement in the credits that said, Based on the stories of Harlan Ellison. Some right. ideas or something. Yeah, yeah. Something, something like, like that. Yeah, right. It was something generic. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's basically the go back in time and kill Hitler. I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah. That's, right. You know, right. 
but but let's just let's just say as cool as soldier was terminator with james cameron behind it did such a phenomenal job now many people have seen this film you know that there's this terminator he's got this skin and then they're trying to destroy him because he keeps coming after this woman and and skin his skin gets burned off and they're thinking oh you know i've killed it but no it keeps coming originally the producer of the film wanted to end the film there after this giant truck explosion and it was Cameron that said, no, 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 guys. He keeps coming. We, we, we have to finish this because you had to do stop motion animation. It, it added more money to the budget. The producers didn't want to do it. They did it reluctantly. And that's what makes that film, the yeah, whole totally. ending sequence. And, yeah. and of course, yes. it created this whole franchise. The endoskeleton is what we really remember, aside from you know Arnold doing Arnold, his zombie yeah, back yeah. thing. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Right. Well, if it wasn't for Arnold, you wouldn't give a shit about that endoskeleton. But. Yes, and let us let us yeah. remember. Let's give credit to Arnold because before that, you know, no, he's he, great. Had done, he had done Conan the Barbarian. And I remember yeah. seeing it as a kid. I kind of laughed. Oh, his accent. He's but he did Conan movie. after, I think, right? He did, but uh, Terminator was first. He's so he's so young in that when you watch him now. And what, but yeah. what's cool is it makes sense for his the robot to talk like yeah. that. It seems logical, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. So fantastic. Yeah, he was, but, he was but, born to play that. Role. But I do have to say, I do enjoy the endoskeleton more than I enjoy Arnold because I I just think that that design is so scary. It's like this metal, yeah, yeah. unstoppable yeah. skeleton. Yeah, from a horror it's so movie frightening. standpoint. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I mean, Cameron made a lean, mean, super low budget movie, but it's like it just starts and doesn't let up. I mean, it was. You know, understandably a big hit at the time. But of course, it's, but it's of a, course. I'm sorry, James, go ahead. No, it's also very funny. That's the yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. No, there's some it great, is, there's some great right. stuff yeah. in there, yeah. And then, and yeah. then, as we all know, because the film, low-budget film, hugely successful, he was able to get everything he wanted for Terminator 2. And this is where you had the, the you know, pushing the limits of Liquid CGI. Metal. I mean, yeah. look, look. At the time, I mean, we joke about it now, but at the time, that was so freaking cool. Sure. The whole liquid yeah. metal thing. Well, James so Cameron, cool. James Cameron, I think, and, and this is a weird thing to say, but I think he's underappreciated. Yeah, I mean, term, he, is, in, he, is a, he is a force. Like, he, when he sets his sights on something, makes it, he's going to make it. No matter, like, you know, nobody's going to stop yeah. him. And I mean, I, like, he... I did a corporate event where he he spoke, and I mean he he's just done some amazing things. So that the movie Abyss, which is where the sure he got the ability the, to do that Abyss. liquid yeah. metal thing yeah, the from whole, Terminator Two, the liquid water, yeah, yeah, and that was I mean, that was groundbreaking at the time, right? Yep, and he invented submersibles to be able to go to the bottom of the ocean to to sh- he invented the submarine and the camera to be able to go to the bottom of the <laughs> ocean to shoot the stuff that he wanted to. He's That's a, an underrated movie. Yeah. He's an incredible kind of a yeah. guy, James Cameron. And Aliens is oh, still oh, yeah. God, yeah. one of my favorite films Fantastic. of all time. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So, so that's another one, Jake. So the, so you got the Terminator movies. We already talked about 12 Monkeys, but and I think uh, when I looked at the notes from our last, uh, which to you is our last episode, uh, Looper <laughs> also starring Bruce Willis. I think that's shout out to Looper right. as a time travel movie. I feel like a movie that that we don't really think of as a time travel movie, but Arrival with Amy Adams, that <gasps> were the aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's there a, is an uh, element. Yeah. There's more yeah. like it, right? There is an element is of a, time travel a bit. That's a good movie. That's a really good. I movie. think it's so cool. I think it's some people think it's too cerebral. Oh, I gotta think too. Well, hard. That's what I like about it. That's why it's yeah. yeah that, that's why it's no, great. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, you, smart yeah. science fiction. Yeah, you really once. have to. You have to buy in and and contemplate the idea of aliens that can live their lives all at once that they they yeah. experience their whole time at at one time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so Arrival, great movie. Um, my daughter, who's fifteen years old, almost sixteen, and I, after we watched uh, all the Doctor Who's, then we got into other sci-fi things or or superhero movies that we liked. We watched The Flash, and I feel like there's a lot of the flash tv show which even though it's it's geared towards teens it has some cautionary lessons about time travel which is basically bad shit's gonna happen don't do it even <laughs> right, though right, right. in the flash they can't resist traveling in time right. but if you've got a teenage kid it there's it's a good mix between time travel sci-fi and uh, sure. teen romance right. and then the last one on my list for the lightning round is a movie that's come out i think since our last talk that I really enjoyed Interstellar. 
<gasps> yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, it, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's on my list too. It's it's interesting to 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 bring up because you know there was a discussion about traveling through time and you know if you time travel is really possible but can you only travel into the future you can't yes. go backward and it, it, there's this whole thing about einstein uh saying yeah, the relativity that, is yeah. handled very well i think in that movie a exactly yeah, yeah. the theory that time and space are linked together and he said the universe has a speed limit nothing can travel faster than the speed of light so heck hey we if we are able to create something that can travel the speed of light we can go into the future but it's like we just can't go back but Interstellar brings up some really interesting thing about time and space. Really cool, Jake. Yes, I really like that one. Well, and I and I, I think in in the same way that Twelve Monkey, or in a different way that Twelve Monkey speaks to now, Interstellar kind of speaks to now in that in that idea of. I sometimes say with certain times of year, I'm not crazy about Christmas. I always say if I could take a pill at Halloween and wake <laughs> up on January 2nd, I would be happy. How I feel you? like right now, this weird kind of time with uh, the global pandemic and uh, these racism protests and all this other stuff and the repeating Groundhog Day nature of our you know lives indoors. If I could take yeah. a pill and just wake up and be exactly the same age, my biological body would not age, but it would just be a year from now. Mm -hmm. I, I would be into that. Hmm. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for sharing. That. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm the only one. Terrific. No, no, no. But you know, Jake, what's interesting is you brought up some science. You know, I'm going to bring up some time travel that has to do with magic. Okay. Oh, awesome. Now, uh, just really quickly, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, you're probably going to time travel in that. This is the third movie in the series. And there's some, a series of events that happens through the film that are that are kind of bad and some things kind of may lose their freedom or lose their lives during school harry and ron notice that hermione seems to pop up in certain places they don't really realize they go you're in this hmm. class i didn't know you're really in this class we find out towards the end that because hermione loves studying so much she was actually given this time turner and what she does is she will go to a class go to the class at the end of the class spin her time turner and it would go back in time and then she'd go to another class and that's how she would do all these multiple classes and when we get to this point she actually uses the time turner which is what you really shouldn't do to help them all right, her and harry go back in time to kind of fix some things that have happened. And she acts, there's a line where she says, we have to be really careful because wizards who mess with time, terrible things happen to them. But there's a <laughs> sequence in Harry Potter where time travel is used. So there's cool. that one. And as, then, yes. as with all the wands that you can buy, you can also buy a souvenir time turner, which I, my daughter ah. was really into Harry Potter. Yeah, cool. my and daughter so, has one too. Yeah, yeah the time yeah. turner, you got to have one. They don't <laughs> work. The souvenir, the souvenir ones don't work. No. No. And and look, look. Uh, and we've been talking about Star Trek. I just want to say another one that I love. We've talked about in the past. Star Trek for the voyage home. This is the one where they, they're coming after yeah. after going through this adventure. They're coming back home, and there's this giant satellite thing that is trying to contact Earth, but nothing will speak to it because it's giving these funky sounds. They realize, oh my gosh, this is the sound of humpback whales. And there are no humpback whales in the 24th century. What can we do? Heck, let's go back in time, see if we can bring some humpback whales to the future. So but their solution is let's, let's go back to the future by racing towards the sun, getting them to the speed of light and circling around. Through uh, their science, they're able to go back in time to go find a couple whales. And what's wonderful about it is this is the film that non-Star Trek fans saw and they loved because it had a lot of comedy. It was contemporary. It took place in 1984. And you actually had ecological statement about the whales. So it's, it's actually a, a wonderful classic Star Trek film. Well, they kind of threw away all the Starfleet rules, but... Okay. And they do that in every episode of Star Trek. Well, yeah, but this was a little much. this is pretty egregious. You know, you know, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, but but look, they, they brought back the humpback whale, man. Uh, yeah. It's not my favorite, yeah. but well, I, I well, do oh. I do like it, but it's not it's not one of my favorite uh Star Trek addings. All right. It's well, a little you, too goofball for Well, me. there you go. Lightning round. Sean, why don't you give us a couple? Uh, okay, well, if you want to talk about goofball, um it's funny you guys are talking about a uh, city on the edge of forever. You have the uh Guardian of Forever. Uh, this movie is um, a sequel to a, a pretty fun film. The first movie was called Beastmaster, 
the Beastmaster. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was an 80s film directed by Don Coscarelli, the Phantasm. Mark Singer right. is this, uh, you know, buff hero type. But they made a sequel in 1991 called Beastmaster 2, Through the Portal of Time. Oh. <laughs> and and the Portal of Time in this movie is pretty much exactly the Guardian of Forever. <laughs> it looks oh. exactly like it. So basically, uh, Dar, that's the uh, name of Mark Singer's character, he matches wits with this evil overlord played by Wingshauser, as you know, is a great character actor. And Wingshauser is teamed up with this evil witch played by the very sexy Sarah Douglas. And oh. she, she has control of this Guardian of Forever type time portal. And so the idea is that they're going to go into the past because she, she somehow is able to make this time portal work where it goes back to early 90s Los Angeles. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, basically Dar... Uh, goes into into contemporary uh, LA and teams oh up with uh, with this like Valley Girl played by Carrie Wurr, and of course Wings Hauser and Sarah Douglas are now in in LA running around trying to get this nuclear detonator that's gonna he's gonna use in his time. But the funny thing is that the movie is called Beastmaster Two Through the Portal of Time, and characters in the movie say oh yeah we're going to travel back in time but actually but then they also are saying it's a parallel universe so the movie doesn't even know exactly what, what it is <laughs> but because it's called through the portal of time i'm going to say it's a time travel movie that's very silly and very goofy but it's also lots of fun uh to give you an idea of the fact that the movie doesn't take itself too seriously in one scene when dar is riding in uh carrie words the valley girl she's driving her convertible uh with dar down Hollywood Boulevard and they pass, you know, all these sites. What is this? You know, he's, he's a barbarian in, in a future world. <laughs> they pass a uh, movie theater along Hollywood Boulevard and the marquee on the movie theater is Beastmaster 2 through the portal of time. Oh. So, so it's like, and he's like a little, wait, what's that? So it's, it's very silly, <laughs> but it's fun. And you got, you got a great cast. Mark Singer is great. And, uh, you know, Wings Hauser, totally over the top performance. Um, but it's fun. Um, another one I would say that was a recent film that Matt turned me on to that has a time traveling element to it. This is from 2018. It's called Freaks. Oh, yeah. Ooh, freaks. Yeah, Freaks. It's, now, I'm not going to, I'm going to be hard to say this without giving too much away, but basically in this film, it's, it's, it's this kind of mystery. You don't know what's going on. There's this father who um, is very protective of his little daughter. Who he says, you know, you can't go outside. You can never go outside because there's bad people out there. You have to stay inside. You have to be protected. And there's something going on with the daughter. Like maybe she has some kind of weird powers. You don't know what's going on. But there is an element of time travel because there's a particular character who kind of has time altering abilities so that they can live in a bubble of time that's much longer than what appears to the outside the rest of the world he can have them in a bubble that takes place over years, but to the rest of the world, it's only a couple of months. Uh, I don't want to say more than that because it gives too much away. The movie is really well done. Uh, it's kind of a sci-fi horror combination. It's, all, it's, it's really hard to kind of categorize, to be honest, but it's very good. It's a really cool mystery that slowly unfolds and there's this cool time element to it. And it's worth checking out. It's not the best title. They should have yes. named them differently, but it's called Freaks from 2018. So you recommend Freaks over Beastmaster 2? <laughs> uh, both films are fun in their own way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there you Thanks. go. This is my two. Thanks, Sean. James, Thanks, how, about, how about you? I'm a big fan of uh, the Bill and Ted movies. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think you. I need to regurgitate what those movies are all well, there, about. There's a new one coming out. Yes, Bill and Ted Face the Music. It's yeah. supposed to be released this mm -hmm. summer. Now, I don't know if it's going to be in theaters or at home yeah, or yeah. what, but the fact that, that after like 19 years, they're bringing them back is awesome. Uh, Neck yeah. I did these action figures of Bill and Ted I didn't get, and now I'm thinking of getting them. Yeah, I also really just, cool. just realized that those movies are all co-written by Richard Matheson's son, Chris Matheson, uh, which is pretty cool considering yeah. Richard Matheson did Somewhere in Time and, you know, Good right. Time Return and all that. Right. Also, I uh, want to mention a series that Full Moon Entertainment did back in the day, in the 90s, called Josh Kirby Time Warrior, which was extremely influenced by Back to the Future. And the reason I bring it up is that I haven't actually seen these movies, but my friends wrote them. And I had a hand in contributing some humor to one of the episodes which was called Journey to the Magic Cavern. 
And in all wow. these years, I've never watched it because I was always a little bit like, I'm sure none of my stuff made it in. But I, I watched a little bit on YouTube the other day. And some of my humor is actually in there. So nice. if, anyone, cool. if anyone decides to check out Journey to the Magic Cavern on YouTube, they'll see some James type humor on there. <laughs> did you, did you get a, lot, your, a lot of puns? <laughs> yeah. Like, there's some, there's some puns to be had. Because, did, you you know, get your, uh, did you get your residual check for that? This was uncredited. So, uh, an uncredited contribution. Then I'll, I will finish this out with a mention, uh, only because I've been thinking about this lately, Planet of the Apes, and I know we've talked about it a billion yeah, times, but sure. that was the very first series that ever made me think about a time travel continuum. And I was really impressed mm -hmm. with how they went to such an effort to bring it back full circle. But as yeah. I throughout the five films, but as I've been thinking about it more lately, it's like, well, they, for all the trouble they went to, they didn't quite do that because when you finally reach the end of battle, it's not like the end of the first movie where it's like you blew it all up. There isn't nuclear annihilation at that point. Maybe, maybe there's a sense of hope and maybe that yes. was on purpose. That's how I saw it. Yeah. I think yeah. they're trying to do that for that last film to be a little more positive. And it's still to me a possible, it's like a splinter thing. It's like a, that's a splinter yes. future. Yes. It, there could be other futures. With there that, could, you know? but because I like those it. mutants. Yeah. There's mutants at the end of battle are possibly the early versions of the mutants that we'll see in Beneath. Right, right. But I, I look at it as a more positive spin, how humans and apes just learn to get along. Well, that's, that makes it even more impressive to me. Yeah. So, yeah, so there you go. Cool. Nice one, James. Nice. Hey, yeah. Matt, bring it home, buddy. All right, I will. There is a show called Dark. I might have talked about it in the past. Uh, that's weekly. a German show. A German show, science fiction. Talk yes. about the quintessential time travel show. Yeah. This is a, a show that starts with the disappearance of a child and then ends up going into this whole really intricate time travel conspiracy. Cool. It's got and, a good and it's got a kind of a steampunky quality to it. Oh to yeah. Me, at least. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, there's there's that. It's also really well shot and acted. And all you do have to read. Well, you do have to read, but it, but it, but it helps, though. Oh, darn. <laughs> it yeah. does help, though, because it forces you to pay attention. And you really need to pay attention while watching the show because there's a lot of things that connect. You see, you know, the future version of someone, and then you see their young version. And so you've really got to pay attention. You're like, oh, okay, that's the future version of that person and they're interacting right. with this person yeah, but so you cool. really have to be on top of it it's not the kind of show where you can you know dust the bookcase and right. watch it at the same my, time my my wife loves that show i have not seen it yet but uh i have to check it out because she it's loves great it. uh there's a second season there's supposed to be a third season where they're going to wrap the whole thing up I almost feel like I have to rewatch the first season before I can watch the second season because it is so kind of literary and it You really have to pay attention. I need to I was we were going to get into the second season and we started watching it and it was like, "Oh man, I there's so much here. I think we either have to go back through Wikipedia or something and you know, remind ourselves of all the tendrils of the story or just watch the first season again, which that's probably the best idea but that I'm, is that's a brilliant show i'm glad you brought that up because i've watched that by myself and now that you bring it up during this time i think that uh, belinda i might watch that with my wife i think she would really like it because it's uh, it's smart and it's adult and yeah. it's just great tv yeah and cool. then for, <laughs> on the other side of the spectrum <laughs> we, we can't forget mr peabody and she, oh, that's right. Hey. That's right. Oh, I love really? that cartoon. Uh, oh, Mr. and there have been so many incarnations since the '60s, but uh, the only one that is real to me is the original '60s Jay Ward from right. uh, Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Anybody has anybody seen? I never saw it, but anybody see the movie? There was like a theatrical movie. Was it CGI? Character? Yeah, yes. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. Is it, did you see? Is it, it good? I watched it because my kid and I loved yeah, Doctor yeah. Who, and yeah. so that was her bookend into sci-fi, which is something that we share. So we went to see that movie, and I would have to say, look, 
<laughs> if you've got a teenage kid who's into sci-fi, it's a fun thing to go watch with them as a thing on your own. Mm, I don't, I don't. Cause, cause the J word cartoons worked on two levels. They worked for kids, they but did. they also had a lot of adult humor that went over, you yes. know, little kids. Head. Yes. Right. Yeah. I, I, I think there's a little bit of that, but it's not quite right. A, a, you, take a, take a young person, like a 12, 13 year old. Yeah. 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 But I, I love that cartoon and I love the Wayback Machine. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's a classic cartoon. And I'm sure there are numerous outlets where you can find that cartoon and watch them. And, and sure, I, sure. And yeah. Matt, for people who don't know, can you tell them who Mr. Peabody and Sherman are? Oh, thank you. Yes. Well, Mr. Peabody is a dog <laughs> who is, who is but he also. Can talk, but he, he can, can talk. He can talk. He's a talking dog. And I'm assuming that a, a regular dog went into the future somehow and then changed to be a brilliant scientist. And then, like, the, I'm writing my own fan fiction, the backstory. In, in, no, in this, in, this, in this new movie, they kind of do, they invent oh, do their they? own backstory. And, oh, and of course. So Everything as I, as I remember, backstory. As I remember from that movie, and it, it, this isn't one of the giant flashbacks of my life, the birth of my <laughs> child or my marriage, but... It seems like to me now when I think about it, the dog comes back from the future and the boy is the dog's pet. <laughs> oh, right. well, that well, That's and that was, the cartoon was, that was the, uh, the original cartoon. It was that too. Yeah. Right. I right. think he even said he's my boy or something like that. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. And so Sherman is just this nerdy kid with glasses who does whatever Mr. Peabody tells him to. And sometimes we'll get them into trouble, but they have a really nice tender relationship and I just, I love that. That was something that I always look forward to within the Bullwinkle cartoons. I love yeah. Bullwinkle and Rocky, yeah. Yeah. but like that was one where it's like, oh, yay, Mr. Peabody. What I liked about Mr. Peabody was, first of all, to me as a kid, he had the most intelligent voice. He, yeah. was, he, didn't, <laughs> yeah. he didn't talk like Huckleberry Hound. Mr. Peabody was sharp, articulate, and he spoke fast. Do you guys remember <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, that, was that Wally Cox who did the voice? No, no I, I, or, or, I, from what it, I, I think it's Bill Scott. Bill Scott. But his voice was very, and here, Sherman, we're going to be doing, it was very fast, and you yeah. really had to listen as a <laughs> yeah. kid. That's what yeah. I remember. That's what I liked about it. Yeah, but that's a great one. And then I want to throw in one from China. And it's a 1989 Hong Kong. It's a martial arts movie that has a lot of fantasy elements as well. In a lot of ways, in my opinion, it is the good version of Highlander. I am not a fan of Highlander. I think it it kind of blows. (laughs) If you want to see the the good version, see the film The Iceman Cometh. Not to be confused with the Eugene (laughs) O'Neill play. Yeah, that play is about a different thing, I think. Yeah. In this version, it's 16th century China, and Feng Xiao Ching, played by Yuan Bao, legendary martial arts star, is tracking serial killer and rapist Feng San, played by Yuan Hua. And through a series of circumstances, they wind up in the future, which is the 80s. And Yuan Bao meets this sassy prostitute played by Maggie Chung. They strike up a relationship and, you know, he's like this straight laced hero type. And so he's not even picking up on her street smart attitude. And so it's this nice contrast of personalities that's funny. It's charming. And the martial arts stuff is unbelievable. So that's the thing too, about like with Highlander Highlander, there's a couple lame sword fights but in this one, it's full-on Hong Kong martial arts fantasy action. And wow. it is wow. amazing. Oh, yeah. but, but Matt, how can you not like Highlander? It's yeah. got tons of lightning in it. It does have like You know what? <laughs> when I first saw it, I did walk out of the theater going, good lightning. <laughs> nice lightning. You're not going to fault it for that. Oh, but wow. um, that's a great one. And I, I'd also like to just throw in a shout out to one of my favorite time travel movies of all time, which is 2006's Idiocracy. Oh, yes, uh, yes. Idiocracy is amazing. And it was this movie that like, it seemed like when it came out, poor Mike Judge, he had a hard time initially getting uh, Office Space distributed, but it became a cult classic. Same thing happened with this movie. Most people have seen this film, but it's Luke Wilson and Maya Rudolph, and they go into the future, and the future is 
unfortunately, where I think uh, our country could be heading. Yes. <laughs> and I have to say more and more, considering what we're going through, I am starting to really respect the presidentialness of President Camacho and that film. Because uh, he does listen to the smart people eventually. And uh, it's a great movie. And there's laughs all the way through. It's actually also really great science fiction. Yeah. I mean, it's I think actually that's like Terry Crews is President Camacho. Oh, yeah. He's, he's hysterical. He's hysterical and what a performance. I, and I just, I love those speeches where he's shooting off guns. <laughs> like, yeah. we, are, we are really not that far away from any I of know. this. Tell me about it. But, oh, not, a, not only we're not, not that far away, I feel like it might be great if that happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's like, what I'm saying too. I was just like, would, Cam would, Camacho actually gets stuff done. In the end, Wayne Johnson, The Rock, former <laughs> professional wrestler. Yeah, I I feel like he would make a great president. Yeah, I, I I'd vote for him. <laughs> but um, Luke Wilson is wonderful, and so is Maya Rudolph, and Dax Shepard is hilarious. Good. Yes, very wow. good. Matt, cool. thank you so much. That those are all thank great, you. and actually, I'm gonna have to. I've started to create a list, so I got it because there's a bunch of ones I got to see, especially uh, Hot Tub. Oh, I'm, and and let me just throw yeah, in. I gotta, let me oh, just throw oh, yeah. in one really just fast, and I won't even get into it. But just look up the film. Frequently asked questions about time travel. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I, with I Chris O'Dowd yeah. and Anna Faris. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Wow. And my wife just look that up too. that film. It's another good time travel one. Group of friends who meet a time traveler, and the fun starts from there. Cool. <laughs> but hey, before we end this show. I want to throw out a question to all of us, and I know we've dabbled in this before, but I would like to ask, if each of us had our own time machine, what would we do with it? And you could change your answer from previous answers you've had for this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So, I don't remember what yeah. I said last well, time. Uh, well, right. I'll tell you this. I know what I would do. And uh, Jake, if you don't mind, I'll just butt in here. So you guys chastised me for saying, well, if I had a time machine, I'd go back to 1950. And I decided, well, this is what I would do. I would get in that time machine, and I'd go to 1933, and I'd go to the theater that's showing King Kong. And I'd take their large, I'd, I'd go and I'd take their large three-sheet King Kong poster out and all their lobby cards, and I would have an original King Kong three-sheet. I'd get back in the time machine, then go to 1950, get out, and get some toys that are in mint and box, you know, and right, put right. those in. And then I go back to the future. So, and is this just for your own nerd satisfaction to have in your personal collection, is or is this to become rich? No, 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 for, no, no. no, 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 no. It's for my personal collection. I'm yeah, it's for him. Go, yeah. I'm not going to go back and you know, you know, try to change history. But the interesting thing is, I know that you know by taking the King Kong poster or taking the little robot, I guess I am changing history somewhat because the little kid who is going to get the little atomic robot that I buy now, now it's like, Oh, he doesn't get it now. So maybe I'm not going to become a scientist anymore because I didn't get my robot. So I don't know, but, but I can't think about that. I'm just thinking I get my King Kong poster. Then I get my toys from 1950s. So. All right. Okay. I like that. Hmm. How about you, well, Sean? Sean? I know that's hard. I don't know what I said last time, but like, I, there's certain mysteries I would want to know about if they, what they really happened and what was solved in the past. So I would probably go back to the sixties and hang out with those guys in the Northwest walking through the woods, the Patterson and those guys. And when they come across Bigfoot, and they, yeah. shoot, they shoot that movie, a Bigfoot walking across. I want to be there and see what the fuck that really was. Was that Bigfoot? Was that a role like hominid from the, or, or um, is it a guy in a suit? And if it's a guy in a suit, I can go up and talk to him. So what the fuck to, are you doing? What, to why save you, you yeah. To, to save you the trip for maybe <laughs> another trip. Uh, it's not Bigfoot. You know, though. Yeah, I, I, I think I, it's Sean, already I been like, no, disproven. Uh, but yeah, it hasn't, like, hasn't. It's like, I think the Loch Ness Monster, I think they said, the guy admitted it, I think. But I don't know about that. It's an interesting it, idea, though. And that's yeah, an interesting I, choice. I think the last one I did was Roswell too. I want to be there. With, okay, with yeah. that's crashed. good. I like that. I like. I like. I want to be there when too. it happens. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here you go, James. I want to go about a hundred years into the future, 
Not much less, not much more. Wow. Uh, but I'd be, I'd be really curious as to where we are 100 years from now as far as technology. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean. I'd be terrified. You know, yeah, me too. Oh, it's going to be terrifying. Don't get no, I don't want to know. I mean, I really yeah, don't. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of terrifying shit about going back 100 years too. Nah. <laughs> it's like, oh. How do you do it right? Well, <laughs> anyway, that, that would be my thing. All right. Hey, Matt? Matt? Uh, I think what I would do, I've said in the past that I would go see certain shows. I would love to see Martin and Lewis, you mm, know, at the Copa. Right, that right. would be great. But when it comes to toys, I know that, you know, Larry's going to go back and get his toys. What I think I would like to do is maybe go back in time and stop young me from destroying my toys. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. And so I could have the, not only, I couldn't just get the toys. I could get my toys. Yeah. Your so, actual toys. Yeah. So anything that ever went wrong, like a, a, a piece was destroyed or, you know, a robot stopped working because I was a little too rough on it. I pop right. in there and go, no, nope, don't do that. Okay. And I, and I just give, I give young me just a, a wad of cash from the time. And right. I just go here, I'll buy this off you. Yeah, I'd have to go back to the to, to stop my past self from burning all my toys. Yeah, there you go. So then I'd have my original <laughs> toys, which now talk right. about you know a real sentimental thing to have. Right, your, right. Your real toys that were lost or destroyed, but now you have them back. I think that would be pretty amazing. Cool. Nice one, Matt. All right, Jake, yeah. what would you do? Well, I don't need to do that because I can go to your house, Matt, and see all those toys from my past. You can, yeah. In one case, at least literally. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, and, and Larry, you've got to consider the, this traveler's concept. You go back and you steal the posters from those movies that were just about as they're being thrown away. You get the ones that are being thrown away. So you're, yes. not, you're not really denying anything from a kid. You're saying you're somebody, right. You know, you're right. You're right. Um, I, I don't, I, I, I feel like if you go into the past, you're going into a world that you don't understand where there's forgotten knowledge. I mean, unless you're just going back to your own kind of childhood time. I, I, I don't know if you'd know how to relate in either the past or the future. So it's tricky to go into either of those places. And so... I'm thinking that I that I want to do, which is kind of the time tested greed thing that that to <laughs> don't do it. But I I feel like the you'd go into the past to do some investment thing or something to <laughs> to make yeah. your present life right, right. a little bit easier to be able to to live yeah. now in a more comfortable way that you would like. And like Can invest I, in, invest in eBay really early. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. one of the things I didn't mention was the show Red Dwarf, mm. which is a really funny science fiction comedy show. We've talked about it before, but there's an sure. episode called Time Slides, yes, where oh, yeah. the crew of the interstellar mining ship Red Dwarf figure out there's this developing fluid for pictures that makes it so you can actually go into the picture and exist in whatever time that was. So if you mm -hmm. have a picture of like your birthday from whatever year you can go into that picture. But the limitation is you can't leave the edges of the picture. Uh, and so when they're first playing around with it, they go to, they find a picture of Hitler and they fuck with Hitler and they do all these <laughs> things. But then at one point, Lister, the main character, goes back because there's this thing that they have on the ship that's called a tension sheet. And a tension sheet is this red <laughs> piece of bubble wrap that you pop the bubbles and it's supposed to calm you down but it was just like this giant seller. And so he's going to go back in time and he's going to invent the tension sheet. And so <laughs> to pre, but he's going to be the guy who gets rich off. the yeah. tension sheet. Right, so right. he'll, if he, if he does that, that means he'll never have been on the ship because in red dwarf, he's stuck on the ship 3 million years into the future. He's the last human being. And it's not necessarily the place that he really saw his life going. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to invent the tension sheet and then life's going to be great. But then there's, of course, ramifications to that. And it's a wonderful episode, but it reminded yeah, me of one. what you were talking about. Well, yeah. well, I think that is the problem with time travel and the whole, you change things in the past, change things in the future. And I mean, as a person who's kind of in the, uh, not last part of my life, but certainly more than half has already passed. I, I've really enjoyed it so far, and I'm anxious to see, or not anxious, but I'm interested to see 
how it all comes out. And I'm kind of happy with where I am. I think that there could be some things that, you know, might be nicer now. Like, like I said, if I had more money in the bank and, and didn't have some of the financial concerns that I have, that would be nice. But on the other hand, it, things aren't too bad. So I'm happy with the current rate of time. But if I, but if I had a time travel choice or something that we've talked about in this episode that I think would be great that I would like to do. It would be that it would be the thing from, uh, from the movie arrival. If I could, if I could at the end of my life be allowed then to continually for eternity, just reflect and get a deeper understanding of what has happened during my life. I, that would be great. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, Cause it's like, that's the one thing when you're living in time, it's hard to step back objectively you know what i mean like right. think about you think about yourself as a kid all you've been through yeah, this yeah. point it's just it's a weird you know it's like a weird thing to kind of grasp yeah well when you have kids you sort of see the beginning of the movie that you kind of came into in the middle you know, like we can't remember our childhoods that much but the idea of like in the moment of your death you immediately have access to a hundred percent resolution of everything that you did in your whole life and you could really right kind of take a look at it and get a get a kind of an appreciation and a perspective that, that you don't have when you're alive. I, <laughs> as I long as that. it's a positive perspective. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've done enough well, so far, so far, so good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a worrier. I'm an anxiety guy. So uh, <laughs> I do a lot of that already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're talking about time travel, like, you know, trying to sleep and thinking about junior high school. <laughs> but don't you think if you had a hundred percent or if you had a, a clear resolution view of that like now you've got whatever memories that you have that are clouded with emotions and all that and and if you could really kind of look at it objectively and see all the facts of it and and what what but if we're, happened then how it added up to what happened where you are now unless we're not different. meant to know that unless the mind unless the human mind can take know. that maybe you go nuts from trying to understand yeah, that, that's that. a good like, point you know, too. Yeah, like, it could be, it i think could that's like, years of psychotherapy yeah i think it'd <laughs> yeah. be i think it would be in for, for me i think it would be information overload and i i, I would okay. have trouble processing it because i would then it would be just more information for me to obsess about that's a good yeah. point <laughs> so that's my wish unless that would make me insane, in which case <laughs> okay. I, I, I don't then want you that. wouldn't, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's, good. That's very, very deep, Jake. It is. <laughs> Profound. Well, we could go on and on. <laughs> we really could, Matt. We really could. Jake, I want to thank you so much for, yes. for yeah. coming back thank to go you, over Jake. time travel. I really thought that this time around, man, we, you, you just gave it your all. Thank you so much. Yeah, last time, I don't know what was going on. But, uh, <laughs> I have to admit that in the past, which is my future, I did half-ass it. But I can't say that I've learned that lesson because that's the lesson that I that's where you I get to learn. later is oh, yeah. that right. you really okay. should half ass it. But um, this was so fun. You guys, this is such a fun show. I'd be happy to be on anytime you Please. want me, but thank you for having me on this it. time. It of was course. We always love you. And uh, what are you doing right now that you can plug? Yeah. Oh, well, I've got my, uh, my website is Jake, this.com and my, that's also my Twitter handle. And I think on Facebook, I'm Jake this. And currently since the uh, quarantine has happened, I've been doing a daily on weekdays at 3 p.m. California time. I do a live show from my man cave where we are right now with my wife at 3 p.m. weekdays. Yes, I've watched that. Wow. Very yeah. entertaining. And uh, she, it's kind of a lovely. fun, lighthearted way to, yeah. uh, to enjoy a half hour. And if you're there live and you watch on, it's also on YouTube and Periscope. But if you watch on Facebook live and you interact in the comments, we read those and we, we react to them. So we've got a kind of a local, we've got a following and it's been, it's That's been cool. a super fun thing to do. And you can watch all the old ones if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I can't do that at 3 p.m. Well, you can watch the you can watch them after the fact. They're all still out there. Well, you, and you cool. guys have a really funny, sweet chemistry. I picked a good wife, I have to say. <laughs> you know, I didn't I didn't realize it at the time. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, she's aces. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm also fond of your wife, but not in a non, I, I mean, I, you get what I mean, right? <laughs> hey, look, wherever you want to take it, it's fine. Cause yeah, no, she's sweet. She is sweet. 
Your wife. <laughs> My wife yes. is sweet. Well, well, I'm sure you other guys, I'm sure you guys also have great wives. I just sure. haven't met them yet. Yes. yes. No, no. Well, Jake, thanks very much. I, I'm going to check out this little, little show of yours and check it out. Well, I hope you I hope you do, but watch Travelers first and read that Ken Kimberlick <laughs> book. <laughs> <laughs> Will do, Jake. Agreed. Well, hey, well, let's like have her. a toast. Yes. Let's, yeah. let's have oh, a toast right. to Jake Johansson. And, oh, and time travel. Woo! Time for a listener shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. This goes out to those who have bought more of our special new glow in the dark monster party logo t-shirts. Yay! Yay. Good buyers. Yeah. Smart buyers. <laughs> <laughs> that includes Hans Schroeder from Portland, Oregon. Oh um, yeah. Cool. Frank Lucchese Soto from Arlington Heights, Illinois. Thanks, Frank. All right. Yeah, thank you. Charlie Bonomo from Glendale, California. Oh my, uh, Charlie. Charlie! It's another a second batch, right? A second batch for Charlie. Wow! Sweet. And of course, Walt Keegan from New Jersey. Oh, cool. Walt! And thank you. Yeah, and for every one of those people who is a Patreon member, they got some extra goodies. Cool. Yeah. Goodies. Donated okay. us by Jason Lindsay and Biff Bang Pow Toys. Cool. I nice. for the podcast that gives. Yeah, you get a little extra. We're not. We look. We're not here to make a million dollars. Definitely we're, not. We're, de- we're we're here to make one dollar. Yes. <laughs> we appreciate your support. Yes, we do. Oh, and speaking of Patreon. I would like to welcome a new Patreon member, Cayman Unterborn. All right. Cayman. Welcome aboard. You are welcome. a monster partier, and it's just so awesome, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the it's doors, to have you, the doors that are going to open. You have been lured <laughs> into our fold. <laughs> <laughs> and the doors that will close. There's also those, too. So welcome, my friend. And uh, guys, we got a new review. What? what? A new review? Got a new podcast review. This comes from Random Person. <laughs> <laughs> who writes, okay. great escape from reality. True. <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting on a couch at a great party listening to my long lost nerd high school friends again. <laughs> with, with Raiders or Flash Gordon playing in the background. Cool. Nice. Thanks nice. for the invite. Nice. That's you know, a good thank, one. You know, thank you, you random invited, person. Yes, random person. You are invited over any time. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Random person. What if that actually <laughs> was his name? I know. <laughs> it's like the, the parent's last name was Person, and then the baby came out. It's like, let's just call him random. Yeah. Do you remember that character in the Peanuts where there was a friend of Charlie Brown's who his name was a, a number? His name was like three or seven no. or something like that oh, yeah no. for a while yeah. there was a character in peanuts what yeah sure that wasn't a really? nickname sure i don't wasn't think a so what this is was the, I remember that. the 80s i i don't remember what if it what if his middle name was harry let me random harry person <laughs> <laughs> i like I, it I, this is I, a I this is a gag that just keeps giving it really <laughs> yeah, does, it does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's also remind our listeners that you can find us on Facebook and YouTube at Monster Party TV, and on Twitter at Monster Party HQ. Instagram is also Monster Party HQ, and on whatever platform you're listening to us, please take a moment and share your thoughts with us in a review because we will read it on the air, even if you're a random person. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to be part of the Patreon family that we've created all you have to do is go to patreon.com look for monster party click join and follow the instructions it's going to cost you five bucks and oh the treasures that will be yours audio video you'll be part of special offers and uh it's a it's a super good time on a similar note we talked about our t-shirts you might want to buy a t-shirt or a cap we still have Sizes left, most sizes. I think we're out of triple extra large. We have all the other sizes and we've got quite a few caps. And if you want to buy one, they're 20 bucks for either a single cap or a single t-shirt. And for now, shipping is free. We don't know how much longer it's going to be free 
because like we were discussing at some point, maybe we need to make $2. But, <laughs> but right now it's a promotion. And if you're part of Patreon, like we said, we'll throw in some goodies for you and it'll be a good time for everyone. So anyway, that's what we're doing. We love you guys and stay safe, please. Yes. On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Strofe. And I'm James Conus. Keep America strong. Watch time travel movies. Or don't, and then go back in time and convince yourself to watch time travel movies. Watch out, lightning. Cool. All right, I am officially recording this free banter. Cool. Banter. And at the end, if you will allow, Jake, pick and choose your spontaneous banter carefully. How do you mean? What happens? Well, we record a little stuff in the beginning. We usually put it at the end as an extra. Oh, I see. Yeah, like a blooper, behind the scenes. What's, you know, people want to see behind the curtain, behind the veil. Or as Sean would call it, the veal. Yeah, the veal. It's delicious. Behind the veal. I don't want to know <laughs> behind the veal. I, I want to, well, when is this going to come out? Is this coming out right now? Oh, God, no. Are we no. time, <laughs> so we're time traveling right now. Yes. We are, we're, we're, we are str- Monday. We're speaking to the future listeners. We are living in the future. Right. From our, po- our vantage point here in the past. Yes. None of this has happened yet. Right. Well, well yeah. we are in the middle of some things that when they listen to this, they'll know the conclusion of those things. The, you know, the, the battle against racism, that's either going to yes. be solved or be all, ongoing. All yeah. solved. By, by Sunday night, everything will be solved. <laughs> yeah. I'm just I, happy that it's Monday and all <laughs> guns have been replaced with ice cream. <laughs> well, I would love we that. Got that one done. That's right. It's it's crazy. I I can't even. I I'm supposed to. My driver's license is coming up, and I they have to go in and be there in person because they're transforming all the IDs into the oh, the, the real life the, right. the idea of the future. Oh right. yeah, right. you know. Yeah. And so you can't just renew that by mail. You have to go in. But the problem is, when you go online to make a reservation, you get caught in this loop, which is interesting because that's what we're going to talk about today. But you get caught in this. <laughs> The DMV yes. time loop. <laughs> well, the vortex. They say if you want to fill out an application for a new driver's license, you have to go to this place. And then you get into that process. And then it says, well, now if you want to make an appointment, you have to create another profile. First, you have to create a profile with the DMV. Then they use a third party site to create a verif- verification profile in order to fill out your information for your driver's license. And then once you fill that out, they take you back to the DMV and then you go to make an appointment. And then when you click make an appointment, it says, well, here, do you, what do you want to renew your license? Well, if you want to renew your license, you have to go here to create a profile. And then I've already created a profile. So then you have to go here and fill out. And it's like, I already, I just did that. Sounds like, yeah. Sounds like trying to open a new, uh, an unemployment thing too, same kind of thing. Trying to oh my god, I try. I'm, I'm that's a, a nightmare. I've I've tried to file for unemployment, which is difficult because I'm a comedian. So they, but they they I was told they, my wife, <laughs> um, told me you know I now they've opened it up so private contracts employees can mm. file for unemployment. So I filled right. it out. Well, I gotta I gotta do that then. Well, yeah. and then they said, but because I because I earn my income in all these different states, which technically I did. And so I gave them all my employers of places that I work for, even though right. really I only work for my corporation, which gets paid by these other places. Oh, yeah. How does that be- work? Well, I was trying to be the most to, – to, to fill out a thing that would be the easiest for them to understand. And right. then, But once you claim that you made income outside the state, now you're required to fill out a thing online. Uh, you, you print out a thing, a PDF, and then you have to scan it back. You can't scan it to them. You have to fax it to them, but who has a fax machine? <laughs> so you got to scan it back in. Then you got to go to one of those websites that allows you to fax PDFs to someone, sign up for a free trial. It's I've been joining oh so God. many new things and it's becoming 
so many profiles of me that have been filled out. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is ironic that Larry is late for this because Larry wasn't present for the last time we got together. So he is going to be here. That's supposed to, yeah. <laughs> Do you think he's caught in Zoom hell? Maybe. I, I was this morning. I, I, yeah, I had a thing this morning, a Zoom meeting, and I couldn't get on. I had to re- reinstall Zoom. Are you planning on joining us? Oh, yeah. Well, they've just changed there. I kept getting these emails. Yeah. You got to upgrade. You got to upgrade. You got to upgrade. Just, check, just checking up. Yeah, I know. My daughter's in uh, ninth grade. And this Next year, she's going to the public school. But this year, the private school has got a co- pretty comprehensive, like all the teachers are teaching a Zoom version of their class. Mm-hmm. But the teachers, of course, these teachers, they're not, Zoom is not their thing. Right. So the kids know more about the technology, even though they've just totally. learned it themselves. Yeah. The teacher accidentally made one of the kids the host of the meeting. and <laughs> gets, oh. That's great. <clears throat> wow. All right. Well, Larry is going to be Okay. What do you say? He's just running late? I don't know what the deal is, but uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's going to make it. Hey, Matt, are you on? Because we, could, we, we, this, we can use this. Are you on headphones, <laughs> yeah. Matt? I'm not on headphones. I think it's a good idea because I think that affects the audio. In other words, if you're on if you're on headphones, then it'll it won't try and clip out your voice. It's funny. I've tried this before, and I couldn't hear anything on the headphones. But I'm going to get some and try them again. Yeah, you, you sound okay right now, but I, I mean, yeah, it's 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 really random. It's like very um spur, uh, very uneven and very un uh, inconsistent of like the bugs that we have. But for the most part, we've done like about four of these now. And uh-huh. it's been working, yeah. working pretty well, good, considering. Yeah, well, yeah. My, my understanding was, like, if you over-talk and you don't have headphones in, then Zoom has got to decide between what you're saying and what the other people oh, are saying. That could, Whereas, be, that could explain some of those things, maybe. If, if you've yeah. got headphones in, it can hear and record both. Okay, okay. That's it, oh, I just, yeah, I because no it's cutting, when you talk, it's cutting off the audio of the other thing. Right, right. Mm-hmm. On okay. your particular on your particular Zoom thing, and so right. if you're the one who's recording, it can cause a problem. Right, right. Okay. Uh, so, do you do a lot? Have you been doing a lot of stuff for work too through Zoom? Well, I've had a, I've had I haven't done a Zoom comedy show yet, but I've heard, you know, the way that they're doing that is, at least one of the best ways I've heard is they they allow the people in who bought tickets to see the show, mm-hmm. and then then they, the host has them hold, you know, put your hand up, which is a thing you can do in Zoom. If you have a quiet room, headphones, and you're oh. a good laugher. And the reason for the <laughs> headphones is so it doesn't mess up the, the audio. Interesting. I'm on, I'm on headphones. You sound a little louder. You sound better, actually, maybe. Okay, good. Yeah, see, you know. Yeah. You, a little clearer, you, more present. You're, uh, you're youthful in your knowledge, <laughs> Manson. Well, I'm. Yeah, I've got a young kid. Well, I guess no. This is from this is from our contemporary comedians, maybe younger peers than me. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's funny because the first time I did it, the first couple times I did it, I had headphones and I was using a different mic, and then that sucked. And then it was just like I couldn't figure out what was the right way. But this, I think, is it. You sound yeah, good. good. Yeah. Yeah, you sound pretty good too, James. Good. Good. Since I started using my phone instead of my laptop, it's been so much better. Oh, your phone's better than your laptop. I, I get a lot of uh, signal breakup on my laptop. It was the most frustrating thing I ever experienced. I swear to God. The most <laughs> frustrating like, oh. thing you've ever experienced. Your life. I, much. Want, was, I want your life. I want you. Is, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you have been so blessed. How I dare guess I have. How dare they do this to me? <laughs> All right. Well, those are the friends of Sean behind him. And uh, Sean, while we're waiting for Larry, maybe you can name all of them. Yes, they will. <laughs> and you, they don't have to be the names of the characters. You can just, whatever you've named them, you know. Yes. Skip, Larry, Chief, Andrew, Raul. Did Ahmed. anybody, talking about action figures, did anybody buy the Distinctive Dummies Karen Black from Trilogy of Terror? Do you guys have that? No, it was, it was I interesting. Not. I mean, I, I thought about it, but it's like, no, it's not necessary because I have, you know, I have the life size Zuni fetish doll. It right. is really cool. I mean, like, it's if cool. it was less, if it was less expensive, if somebody gave it yeah. to me, great. But sure. it's not. 
I mean, I you know, likeness is important. Like, the likeness is great. Is the make or break, though? Yeah, but um, yes, Jake, you had a question. I have a question. So you have the little the spooky idol thing that came alive. Yes. Yeah. We, yeah. We, uh, we Sean and I it. definitely have it. Do you have it? Yeah. 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 They they made them like several years ago. They made like a life size like screen accurate yeah. prop for like a couple hundred bucks. And it's amazing. Yeah, we all have them. Except for so Larry. I don't think Larry. That's has time travel right there. They went they they went <laughs> back into your brain's time machine and right. said, This is what you want. This is what nine year old you wants. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> exactly. With two hundred bucks. Yeah. And we yeah. know he's still in there and now he's got yeah. two hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Totally. It was a possible... as, a, as a child prostitute, I could pull in at least a good, <laughs> you know, five per week. So you put two. Is there any the, chance that any of you three have your one of those handy that I could look at? Actually, I can show you. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. So I can, Mine's I can in the way right in the other now. room. Yeah, mine is. Yeah. This yeah. Is, uh, so, so you're passing the fun room. This is now the DVD den. This is all the uh, this is all the DVDs. All the, Remember all DVDs? The DVDs and Blu-rays? Yeah. <laughs> yes. no, I've got some DVDs too. Yeah. What are you here doing? Is the, uh, here is the Zuni hey. finish. Oh my God, that's right awesome! There. there you go. Nice. It's, it's, yeah. it's pretty much exactly Gail you know, and everything. It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, and, I got and you that. can't you can't you can't see. I can't take off that little uh, that little thing around his waist because if you do that, he comes to life, of course. Right. So oh, I forgot so that's, that. That's that's the way it works. Yeah, that's very important. Yes. And let me. So how do, can you even watch that movie now? Is that available? oh yeah, it's on Blu-ray. Oh, sure, yeah, it's yeah. on Blu-ray now. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it holds up with, with awesome. comment, it with commentary up. commentary by Karen Black. Hi, Larry. Mm. Hi. Larry. How are you guys doing? What's going on? Great. How are you? Great. Doing, you all right? Doing okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Larry's got headphones in. Oh, are you guys all wearing your Monster Party t-shirts? We of are. Yeah. <clears throat> who, who do I have to? <laughs> what do I got to do to get one of those? <laughs> I want a Monster uh, Party us? t-shirt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm asking now. Could I please have a Monster Party T-shirt? Yes, size and large? you're in luck too because th- yeah. we we hadn't had these logo shirts for the longest time, but we did a whole new batch, and they're glow in the dark. Yeah. Like the oh line around the logo is um, glow in the dark. And uh, do you have uh, tidy whities that also have the glow in the dark That's Monster next. Party? Yeah. Ooh. I think <laughs> underoos. We got to make Monster Party underoos. That yeah. would be kind of a cool by, idea. By the, the people that make flex tape have uh, <laughs> created something for us that's quite yeah. special. I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a time Famous Monsters actually had, they sold some right. underwear. Do you remember that, Matt? Yes, yeah. That, and it had Famous Monsters right up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Oh. I wonder if any, have you ever seen any of those on eBay, Larry? No. First of all, I haven't looked. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, quite honestly, but you'd have to, even know. if they, even if they were advertised as new, I'd probably have slip, to like, slip, you know, slip, steam, slip, sanitize, slightly, alcohol. Slightly soiled, slightly yeah. soiled, but yeah. still yeah. good condition. Yeah. As funny as that is. A, a lump of 70s shit in there. That, I mean, as, as funny oh. as that is, I, I don't think the, the underoos, the Monster Party underoos would be a big seller. So. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I don't know about it's, that. Really, it's a possible oh, oh, really, interest. James. Really? A, no, yes. No, no. Yes, James. You know? I think if it's really, if you, really, if you, guys, if you guys do a live appearance somewhere and you're selling those after the show, just the laugh that you get when you plug them right at the end of the show, and then the fact that you actually have them, in my experience, like I sold all of my my vagina is driving me nuts t shirts. I, I, I made those as a joke, and, uh, and I sold, I, Hundreds of them. I, I will hundreds model of them. them. Wow. No yeah. shame. I will put those things on <laughs> wow. and I'll full on, you know, baby new year out of live. If you recall the advertisement, it had a picture of a guy standing in like this and it said for the man who has everything. And then it had pictures. <laughs> that's, great. Of, well, that's a good, uh, that's actually a good pitch. Yeah. yeah. But see, oh, all right. The problem. No, go ahead. The problem is well, you, you want to see it. And so that what that means is you're yeah. walking around outside with it. It's like, I don't want to do that. You know, <laughs> I'll walk around that. outside. With my- oh, Hey, you want to see my famous monster? All right. We're ready to start. There was a rumor that the, the Acker Mansion, there was a vending machine somewhere in there that sold the famous monster's panties, but nobody could ever find it. Or something. No, because <laughs> it's nice, not true. James. 
<laughs> oh, I miss Japan. Anyway. Oh. All right. Do you want to start this? Uh, Jake, do you have any questions or anything? You know how this goes, right? You know what the topic is, right, Jake? Yeah, I've got the... I've got a piece of paper and I've also written down in my book of things that I write things Ooh. down in some other okay. movies. Special but thoughts. I okay. have to say that I, as, as I go through the notes here, it appears that I don't, I, I mean, I can remember the title of the movies and some of the things that are in them, but I'm not a, I'm not an in-depth. Well, we'll, uh, well, right? well, yeah, we'll, yeah. You know. we'll, we'll try and help. But I think it's important that we don't just throw out a title, just glance over it. I mean, we should put out a title and let's talk about it. Let's, Let's fill in the blank, you know? And uh, so this is, this if you is, don't fully clean out a wound, it won't heal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, which is this show, I guess, right, Larry? Yeah. This is the wound. Because he, he wasn't part of the last one, you know? So right. He's, so he he's, really wants he's to. held it over our heads forever. Right. So you're, you're writing a wrong in a way. Well, I, haven't, yeah. I haven't held this over anyone's head. Ah. It was just a, just a suggestion. And I was actually late for it, too, so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this but is this now the time, first real official, you know, yeah. Yeah. But this time, nothing can go wrong. <laughs> and Jake, well, when, when you uh, think about it, a time travel is a is a uh, theme that you can do over and over and claim that you haven't done it yet. You never did it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. true. Well, that was our excuse for the fact that Larry wasn't there last time, which was that we had erased him from history. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. And, and in and fact, as if hard I, as if, we if, try, if you guys will call, James is all Larry who? Larry who? So, <laughs> that was fun, right? That's cute. And w- we don't have to do like a hundred of these. You know, let's have like a good 90 yeah. minutes, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. We don't want to keep you too long. So, no, no. Well, yeah, I got a lot of shit to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Just no, look at that no. closet. My God. Oh, well, closet? yeah, you can see the closet, but this is my man cave. Let me just give you a little Let's tour see. around. There's oh, look at that. Oh, a, man. Oh. There's quite a bit of shit in here. I, who's was, the vintage lady in the other? Who's, the vintage who's, lady? who's that lady? That lady? That's my wife from the 90s. She did this ad thing. Cool. Her, grand, her grandmother oh. saved the newspaper. Yeah, we went on a, We went on uh, three dates, and then she couldn't go out with me because she had unfinished business with an ex-boyfriend, and then we reconnected four and a half years later. Wow. And, wow. But right after we went on the three dates, she got this corporate, this great advertising job where a person that I'd gone out with that I was interested in who wasn't interested in me all at once was on billboards in airports. I would go buy that picture of her <laughs> in airports all over the United States for a few That's months. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, now I remember. <laughs> yeah. I guess I should <laughs> apologize because uh, I think I, I got drunk and kissed it a couple of times. <laughs> well, who hasn't kissed? Who hasn't? Right? I react in an airport. Come I mean, on, yeah. Come on. It was pre. It was pre-COVID. It was a different time. <laughs> you didn't you even kissed have every. To. You kissed everything in an airport. You didn't have to show ID to get in there. There were a lot of people in there just that just came to kiss. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, right. There was a separate entrance. Yeah. If you're just here days. to make out with some of the advertisements, you can yeah. just go right in. Yeah. Remember those days you could just walk right in and hey, I'm just gonna walk yeah, in. Right, go yeah, right. Go to the. I know. It's like it's like the Albert Brooks bit. You know. What was that? Hey, remember in real life, he's going. I'm a million miler. I can go into I, any <laughs> lounge in an airport and just sit. <laughs> That's right. Let me get here's the here's the time where we're living in now. And so since we're time traveling into the future, sure. this may not okay. be a big deal. But let me blow everyone's mind right All now. Right. I'm ready for where we are. I got my hair cut today in a barber shop. Holy wow. fuck. Oh. Wow. Yeah. I was sure it was Belinda. <laughs> no, she did the last haircut. The guy, the guy who j- they just opened up on Monday, he says, uh, do, have you been getting your hair cut somewhere else? Oh, hey. <laughs> and it turns out that he had been doing appointment only, you know, naughty haircuts going uh, okay, in. Okay, sure. Yeah, up, yeah, yeah. And they got my, my wife and I got a haircut this weekend, last weekend, and we had the person I used come to the house. She did house calls and she wore a mask and she cut her hair. How do you like that? Yeah. You know what? I want to get a hair. He's looking like a caveman. (laughs) I was going to say something, Sean. (laughs) So caveman, like, you know what I want? I want to get a haircut to be completely safe. I want it to be done like it's a glory hole. (laughs) You know, the two hands through the wall. Well, I, oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. I th- that's the way we're going to do our shopping now, too, is if we're yeah. the, 
we're the dangerous sample inside of the right. It's the drama strand. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. the rubber hands come sure, in. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That would be fun. It's crazy. For a while. <laughs> yeah. And then it would yeah. be horrible. <laughs> yeah. Prostitution is going to be really weird. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, so do you want right. to start this? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Sure. Let's do it. And, and hey, b- before we, b- Jake, before you jump in, we, we have to make sure that James, the lovely James Gonis, is not uh, excluded from this conversation. Yes. I want James, James. I know yeah, I stop, can see stop, it. But, I stop could, butting in so much, James. I, I can see it. I can see it on your evolving head yes. that you have something that you want to contribute here. About the time machine. Well, no. Or time I, travel. I, uh, no, I mean, I've got, I've got a few titles, but uh, if Jake's got one, uh, Jake, uh, jump right in. Well, thanks, James. <laughs> oh. oh, James, you've actually gone to just your name now on the Zoom call. Yeah, you're, you're slowly going back in time until you're disappearing completely. <laughs> now I've it's in like in- old-timey uh, font. <laughs> I've got an incoming call. I'm not going to answer. And, Thanks, uh, James. Yeah, no, no, you have, you. To that, you have to take that call, James. It's from the future. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a movie. It's a Czech movie, which oh, wow. I didn't realize because I think it was dubbed with English actors, mm-hmm. but it's called Journey to the Beginning of Time. Oh, yeah. oh, Matt, you're, mm. I'm sorry, Matt, you're breaking up. Matt, Matt, you're breaking up. Can you go back again and start your beginning? You were broke. You were okay. breaking up. All right, hold on. That's weird. He sounded okay to me. Yeah, he sounded okay to me. Yeah, me okay. too. But I, but I still, sorry. I'd like to hear it again. I'm sorry, Matt. <laughs> I'm gonna, let's, I'm gonna, let's, I'm gonna let's, take a, let's take a journey to the beginning of what you were talking about. <laughs> hey. I, I, so look, where did it start breaking up? What did just it, the Children's matinee? No, you fit, uh, the matinee. The name of the movie, I guess. Yeah, the name okay, of the movie. Okay, okay, okay. You're, 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 you're breaking up, buddy. You're and you travel all over the country and stuff. We just, Hold on. Hold on, Larry. So just, Start. Get, restart, Larry, because you're yeah. Really restart breaking. with big shot comedian. Blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, if you don't mind, if you don't mind. <laughs> World renowned comedian. Go. Oh, you're frozen. You're frozen, Larry. In frozen in time. Like you're world renowned oh, comedian. Yeah. You're you're, you're frozen. Yeah, you gotta do something here. Oh, he's moving closer to the source. Ah, stay Move away from closer. that nobly. Move closer to the tot tub. <laughs> What's the reason that his Wi-Fi failed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, uh-huh. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The government, the government's listening. Oh, sure. In. Yeah. And John Kuzak, yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. This is my teenage son's porn time. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's mine too. <laughs> he, he downloads a lot. <laughs> so now we're on that note. Lightning. <laughs> yeah. Has lightning? to do something with lightning. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, or something with time, like keep we're out of time, film. or are we, or something. Keep, I don't know. keep watching those time travel films. Make sure they have plenty of lightning. <laughs> or go back in the past and watch them again. I, like, I kind of like that angle. Of, something like that. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Watch time travel movies or don't and then go back in time and convince yourself to watch time travel yeah, movies. Something like that, yeah. And then maybe somebody can go, watch out, lightning. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Yeah. Larry can go, watch out, lightning. <laughs> and, then, and I just go, cool. <laughs> yeah. Because cool. I love lightning. Watch yeah. out, lightning. Yeah. yeah. I'll, do the, I'll do the lightning sound effect. Ooh, nice all question. right. So, do you want to practice, practice one? Yes, I like to practice. On that note, so why don't we start just for the practice with "Keep America Strong"? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Keep America Strong. Watch time travel movies, or don't, and then go back in time and convince yourself to watch time travel movies. But don't create a paradox. Watch out, lightning. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> that, 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 was, that was the. Well, how do you do lightning? What is link? <laughs> yeah, yeah lightning. Yeah, yeah. Well, you gotta have okay. some. It's gotta have some muscle to it. 
I don't know. Somebody else do the lightning sound effect. Today. I don't know how to no, do lightning. No, no, no. You're you're Mr. Do a lightning sound lightning. effect, Larry. <laughs> See, I know what the problem is. It's not. It's it's not Sean's lightning, and it's not your lightning. It's we're you know phasing out here when it comes to the mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. So not do so, so well, like, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's it's like better. static. That's that's better. Okay. I like that better. All right. I think once somebody try one. Yeah. Once you say it's lightning, they'll know the sound effect. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.